Hey guys welcome my dears friends what if Naruto went Hokuto no Ken and Kenshiro x Tamari x Harem movie let's start story. Naruto walked down the road with nothing on him but the clothes on his back and a wallet in his pocket that had very little funds in it since he was nearly broke when he began his journey with no set destination. Naruto had been banished from his former village, and while the higher ups from the village had expected him to break down from such news into a state of depression as well as tears, Naruto didn't, he didn't see this as a problem at all but instead he saw it as an opportunity to start anew in a different place. Those who were in the village had always seen him as the Kyubi reborn since his father had sealed the Kyubi within him as a baby. That was right, he knew exactly who his father was, since you had to be an idiot not to see it since besides the whisker on his face, he was a miniature version of the man himself, plus he conversed with the Biju himself when he was younger and he cemented that fact, so why was the son of the most infamous shinobi of his time treated like shit throughout his life? Why it was because the higher ups wanted what was his from the get go and since it was sealed up they couldn't get to it without his consent. So they tried to beat the resistance out of him to make him a weak mindless weapon and would give up his inheritance without a struggle of any sort. He had looked into it in his spare time to see just how far up the chain did the corruption go, and it was unfortunate for him that it went all the way up to the fire daimyo himself who wanted the fortunes of his parents for himself since he was a greedy man and he like the rest of the village had thought that he was the weakling that they wanted him to be, but that view of him had changed when he had gone along with the squad assigned the mission to retrieve Sasuke Uchiha. Earlier, Naruto's influence on Sasuke in the aftermath of the Chunin exams, though profound, was powerless to prevent Sasuke from leaving his village and friends to receive training from Orochimaru since he had become tempted when he saw how powerful he was during the Chunin exams and plus he was given the curse mark. Sasuke's decision to leave was the result of a chain of events that rekindled his hatred for his brother and desire to avenge his clan. To do so, he must claim a great amount of power, which became the center of his entire life, humiliated by Itachi's earlier declaration that he was disappointingly weak, and aware of the fact that Naruto might be his superior, Sasuke challenged Naruto to a fight after Naruto returned to Konoha from his mission to bring back Tsunade to become Hokage since the previous one had died during the Chunin exam invasion. The two of them engaged in a heated duel on the rooftop of the hospital. Where Naruto told Sasuke that he had never considered himself inferior to Sasuke. Kakashi Hataki leapt in to stop the fight just when Naruto and Sasuke were about to use their Rasengan and Chidori. Their signature jutsu, on each other, deflecting both their attacks into adjacent water towers. While Sasuke's Chidori made a larger dent on the front of the tower than Naruto's Rasengan, Sasuke was shocked to find that the back of Naruto's water tank had been completely blown out by the power of his Rasengan. Sasuke realized he might have lost the fight and received major injuries if Kakashi hadn't stopped the fight, this only made Sasuke even angrier that Naruto was getting stronger by the day, and could actually be able to defeat him in battle. Ever since the Chunin exams and the fight against Gara of the Sand, Sasuke had felt that Naruto had been improving immensely. Naruto only wanted recognition from Sasuke recognition that he really had got stronger and was no longer a burden to the squad. However, Sasuke would never recognize Naruto, because, by doing so, he would also have to admit that he was weaker than him. Despite a lecture from Kakashi about the pointlessness of revenge, which made him hypocritical since he hated Naruto since he blamed him for the death of his sensei, the appearance of Orochimaru's sound 4, with an offer of greater powers, and yet another humiliating pummeling, tipped Sasuke over the edge, Sasuke went to leave the village that night, but was disrupted by Sakura, who then tried to convince him to not leave Konoha. During this conversation, a crying and desperate Sakura confessed her love to Sasuke, and begged him not to leave the village, but he rejected her. Once she realized that he was going to leave the village either way, she offered to go with him to help him enact his revenge, which he refused, as a last resort, Sakura threatened to scream and alert the village guards if Sasuke left, and finally, having hit a nerve, Sasuke moved from several feet in front of Sakura to directly behind her in a flash of speed, he sincerely thanked her for everything she had done for him thus far, before knocking her unconscious and laying her on a nearby bench, and then leaving the village. A five-man squad was gathered by Shikamaru under the orders of Tsunade herself. Including himself, Kiba, Naruto, Choji, and Neji, Naruto also recommended Shino. However Shino was on a special mission with his father at the time so he was unavailable for use in the mission. Sakura arrived just before they were leaving and explained to them while crying that she failed to stop Sasuke. And asked Naruto, who she believes to be the only one capable of doing so. To do it as a once in a lifetime request, Naruto made her a lifetime promise to her to bring Sasuke back to the village. They easily caught up to the Sound 4 who were escorting Sasuke to Orochimaru in no time. 
strategies were not used to defeat the Sound 4, rather. The team split up instead, the same happened on the part of the Sound 4. They dropped people one by one. And Choji ended up fighting Jirobo by himself, using two of the secret pills of the Akamichi clan. Choji was able to increase his chakra enough to keep from being defeated. In the end, he had to consume the red pepper pill, which increased his chakra a hundredfold but left him in an extremely critical condition, usually resulting in death, taking the pill slimmed down his body, as the excess calories were converted into butterfly wings of chakra. After getting his revenge on Jirobo for eating his last chip and for calling him fat, Choji put all his chakra and power into his fist, and killed Jirobo for insulting his best friend, Shikamaru. Next, Neji ended up fighting Kitamaru, Kitamaru had trouble at short range. Since Neji's Byakugan and gentle fist were too powerful to penetrate through. Kitamaru ended up fighting from long range, but the battle was locked in a stalemate. Until Kitamaru discovered a weakness of the Byakugan, it has a blind spot behind Neji's first thoracic vertebrae. Knowing that he would be hit in this area, Neji intentionally allowed Kitamaru hit him with a powerful arrow, to which Kitamaru had affixed a chakra string to ensure accuracy, however, Neji used the chakra string to use his gentle fist to damage Kitamaru's internal organs, Neji then caught up with Kitamaru, and used his eight trigrams to close Kitamaru's chakra points, Kitamaru died shortly afterwards but Neji was left in a critical state after the fight. Shikamaru was matched up with Tatuya, while Kiba and Akamaru were with Sakan and Yukon. Kiba and Akamaru did an amazing tag team on Sakan, but Sakan split with Yukon right before Kiba and Akamaru could land a devastating blow. Sakan and Yukon activated their cursed seal to level 2, which made them far too powerful for Kiba and Akamaru to cope with. Meanwhile, Shikamaru, despite his entire prowess at forming strategies, simply couldn't kill Tatuya because of her sheer force. He managed to use his shadow imitation technique on her three summons. But she quickly dispelled them both, then he caught her in his shadow imitation technique. Then his shadow neck binding technique, while, at the same time, Akamaru had got injured, with Kiba refusing to leave him, without Akamaru to do their combination attacks, however, Kiba and Akamaru were forced to retreat, and Shikamaru, for the first time, couldn't come up with any ideas to defeat Tatuya, and was forced to keep his shadow neck binding technique on her, finally, Shikamaru and Kiba were ready to accept their deaths, however, before the finishing strikes could be executed, the Sand Ninja arrived to help. Right before Shikamaru and Kiba were about to die, they were aided by Tamari and Konkuro respectively. Who had been ordered to help the Konoha Ninja, Konkuro's puppets were unaffected by Sakan and Yukon's ability to fuse with cells. When Sakan arrived, he attempted to do the same thing he had almost done with Kiba. But Konkuro turned out to be his new puppet, Kuroari. To injure Sakan, forcing them to fuse back and Yukon to take over. Konkuro then trapped Sakan and Yukon inside his puppet Kuroari. Konkuro then used Karasu to stab them through holes in Kuroari. And used Karasu and Kuroari to do a devastating and deadly combo. Black secret technique machine one shot, thus killing the brothers. Meanwhile, since Tatuya used sound to attack, Tamari's wind was a natural enemy. Tamari used her sickle weasel technique, which blew away Tatuya and cut her flute in half. Shikamaru used this time to tell Tamari about Taiyuan's strategies, after a while, Tatuya fixed her flute, and was ready to kill Shikamaru and Tamari, but Tamari used her summoning technique and used the summoning, quick beheading dance, which was able to kill Tatuya by destroying an entire tract of the forest, in which the sliced debris crushed the latter. Last, Kimamaro, who was stronger than all of the sound four combined, came to aid the escort mission, at first, he was faced with Naruto. But even Naruto's massive amounts of shadow clones proved to be no match for Kimamaro. Whose taijutsu skills were more than a match for Naruto's superior numbers. Naruto even used the nine tailed demon fox chakra. But was still losing. During the fight, Sasuke emerged from the coffin that he had been placed into to be escorted to Orochimaru. Which caused Naruto to return to normal and begin wondering why Sasuke was with the Sound Four. Naruto began urging Sasuke to return home with him, stating how everyone was worried about Sasuke. Unfortunately, Sasuke, who had fallen deeper into darkness, responded by cackling madly before fleeing with Naruto calling Sasuke's name, Kimamaro attempted to kill Naruto, but was stopped by Rock Lee, allowing Naruto to chase after Sasuke while Lee fought Kimamaro. Both Lee and Kimamaro were taijutsu experts, but, since Lee had only recently recovered from his surgery, he was not in top shape, Lee drank some sake that he thought was medicine and became intoxicated and began fighting with the drunken fist style, with this added unpredictability. Lee gained an upper hand against Kimamaro, however. He clearly had no idea what he was doing, 
who he was fighting. And why he felt so drunk, after a while, Kimimaro was forced to do his dance of the camellia. But Rock Lee then appeared to be virtually invincible, and laid a devastating blow to Kimimaro, seeing that there was no chance of him defeating Lee in his present state. Kimimaro used his cursed seal level 1 and overpowered Lee, manifesting his horrific ability to manipulate his bones at will. Not only this, but Lee began to sober up. Lee would have been killed if Gara had not arrived in time and used his sand to protect Lee. For obvious reasons, Kimimaro was at a disadvantage, since Gara was capable of blocking all physical attacks. And Kimimaro could only use physical attacks, however. Like the sound 4, Kimimaro was able to get past Gara's defense and offense by sheer force. Kimimaro's bones were so tough that they simply forced their way through Gara's sand. Even Sand Funeral and other crushing forces couldn't bring down Kimimaro, as he created a film of bone beneath his skin to protect himself. Kimimaro would have defeated and killed Gara with his last attack, but, just before Kimimaro could finish Gara, his terminal illness ended his life. Naruto caught up with Sasuke and they began battling. Sasuke's cursed seal of heaven, which had been powered up by a pill given to him by the Sound 4, this was why he was in the coffin in the first place, gave Sasuke inhuman strength which he used to reduce Naruto to almost ragdoll levels. Meanwhile, Sasuke recalled his experiences with Itachi and his parents up to the point of the Uchiha clan downfall. It was in these memories that the Mangekyo Sharingan, and how Itachi obtained it by killing his best friend, Shisui Uchiha, was revealed. It was also revealed that Itachi had encouraged Sasuke to gain the Mangekyo Sharingan, which he claimed to be the only way he could exact revenge on Itachi by any means necessary, and this became Sasuke's motivation for killing Naruto, who he claimed to be his best friend. Back in Konoha, Kakashi Hitaki, brought up to speed on the situation, and summoned his Ninkan, including Pakun, to track down Naruto and Sasuke, meanwhile, Naruto and Sasuke unleashed the Rasengan and Chidori respectively, causing each other to fly backwards, activating his cursed seal, Sasuke used his enhanced speed and strength to overcome Naruto and strike him with a Chidori, Naruto managed to block the attack, but Sasuke, still intent on killing Naruto, tried to strangle Naruto, only to have himself thrown aside by a Nine Tails powered opponent. With his enhanced abilities, Naruto was able to easily overwhelm Sasuke all the while trying to reason with him. Only to have Sasuke ultimately reject his efforts, despite this. Sasuke finally admitted they were fighting as equals. In this moment, Sasuke's Sharingan finally matured, enabling him to predict Naruto's movements and once again turn the tables. Upset by Naruto's persistence, Sasuke knocked him unconscious with Peregrine Falcon Drop, the Nine Tails, probably to save itself, gave Naruto even more of its chakra, creating, for the first time, Naruto's one-tailed transformation, complete with the demon fox cloak that surrounded him, with one arm of the cloak, Naruto unleashed powerful short and long range attacks, which Sasuke, even with his Sharingan, was unable to keep up with. Feeling he had no choice, Sasuke increased his cursed seal of heaven to level 2. Once again evening the playing field, both Sasuke and Naruto realized the cost of their respective abilities at that point. But both decided that they had no other choice, Sasuke revealed that the location of their fight was the Valley of the End, and, determined to end the battle, forced the use of a third Chidori, Naruto created, using one hand, and the Demon Fox Cloak's chakra as a shell, the Demon Fox Rasengan. Sasuke's Chidori, after a moment, warped into the flapping Chidori, the two ninja collided their attacks. Sasuke planning to punch Naruto in the heart, deliberately missed, and targeted the gut instead, while Naruto, referring to one of Sasuke's insults, scratched his forehead protector, a black dome of energy formed around them, which eventually dissipated, revealing the two ninja as their current forms, and then as their younger selves, who held hands and smiled at each other, when the dust settled, Naruto was revealed to be victorious, it had been a close fight, but what Sasuke had no idea of was the fact that Naruto had been secretly trained by the Kyubi through the years, yet he didn't win unscathed since he wasn't invincible in any way, so he took the unconscious body of Sasuke and began the walk back to Konoha. Once he arrived, he expected some sort of recognition for his accomplishment since he had brought back Sasuke. But instead all he got was more hatred from the people for the damage done to him. Sasuke was admitted to the hospital while Naruto was violently kicked out when he tried to receive medical treatment for the hole in his chest from Sasuke's Chidori. Since he wasn't going to get any sort of treatment from any form of medical staff, he headed to his rundown apartment and fetched the first aid kit he stole a week ago since the store owner charged him a price that was far beyond had a simple med kit should cost. He took a needle and thread and sewed the wound up and allowed Kyubi to heal it back up from there, and as soon as he was finished there was a knock on his door, he opened it and the shinobi that stood there violently shoved a scroll into his chest before he vanished, 
Naruto read the note and saw that the council wanted to see him immediately, on the way to the Hokage Tower for the meeting he met Sakura. Hey there Sakura, Naruto said to his pink hair teammate as she walked up to him. Slam! Sakura fist contacted with Naruto's skull causing the wounded blonde to fall to the ground. I should have known better than to trust you to bring Sasuke-kun back in one piece. You're the reason why he left and also the reason why he is in such a state of pain. I wish you had died. You don't deserve to live after what you have done to him. I hope the councils order you to be executed for being what you are. A monster. Said Sakura before she stormed off in a huff. Things got worse when Naruto entered the council chambers. Naruto did not like the counselors. They were mostly civilians who were fat and spent most of their time and money making his life miserable in one way or another. Worst of all was that they were in the villager shinobi elder's pocket. Uzumaki Naruto. Do you know we have summoned you? Elder Yutatane Kaharu asked. No, Naruto answered truthfully, but if he was being honest he had an idea as to what it was about in the first place. We are concerned about the display of using the monster's chakra, better known as the Cubus Chakra against one Uchiha Sasuke, Elder Maitokata Homura said. I had no choice in the matter. Sasuke was using Orochimaru's cursed seal and it made him look inhuman, not to mention I got hit by the Chidori twice, Naruto said in protest, he should have foreseen this. He knew that they hated him just for being a Jinchuriki. The village council must have given the elders a lot of money to set this all up. It was the perfect excuse to be rid of him after all this time. While that is understandable, Uzumaki Naruto, we have our concerns and quite frankly, we are worried, or more specifically, your use of that foul monster's chakra is what worries us. You even mentioned in your report you felt like you were losing control of yourself and summoning to Cubus chakra which holds nothing but malice, hate and anger. How do we know that the Kiyubi is not influencing you? Kaharu said. I control my own actions, it's true I feel those things when I use the Cubus Chakra but I control my actions, Naruto said in protest, he knew however, it had fallen on deaf ears. This isn't the first time you've lost control is it? Homaru asked. No, Naruto admitted sadly. Yes, against the terrorist Momochi Zabuza, you lost control against his apprentice, Haku I believe and you admitted you could have mauled Uchiha Sasuke then. But I didn't, Naruto shouted, hold on. Is this about Naruto using the Cubus Chakra? Because I've seen the reports on the Chunin exams and Naruto demonstrated the ability to control the Cubus Chakra to some degree. That's why he's under apprenticeship with Jiraiya, so Jiraiya can keep an eye on Naruto and have Naruto grow strong enough to control the Cubus Chakra. Tsunade said in an angry tone of voice. Naruto smiled since he knew that at least there was one person who he could count on in this village at least, or at least so it appeared from a third party perspective. Can he Tsunade? Shimura Danzo said for the first time. There's nothing special about him, he doesn't even have any real talent, he's also proving to be a problem more than a liability. It's true he can draw out the beast's chakra, but he cannot control it effectively. As Hokage, you must think what's best for the village and not your own selfish desires. The question I have is what happens if he loses control in the middle of the village? Didn't you hear a word I said? Tsunade said, Of course, but can you and Jiraiya truly keep the boy in check? The fire daimyo doesn't think so and agrees with us that the boy is unstable, Danzo said in a monotone voice. Naruto knew at once where this was going, he didn't like it but it was true. Danzo you bastard, Tsunade growled, Danzo is not wrong Tsunade. There is also the matter of Akatsuki, according to Jiraiya. They are made up of 10 S-class criminals, and Orochimaru used to be one of them and he killed the Sandame Hokage. Uchiha Itachi is one of them and he nearly got his hands on the Kiyubi, we cannot face Orochimaru and Akatsuki, Kumogakure and Iwagakure are mobilizing their shinobi. Things are very tense right now in the world and the possibility of another war is blooming on the horizon. Konoha must take actions to secure its citizens, Kaharu said. You only made this meeting to make it official, you've already made up your minds. We have, and the boy has not convinced us he can keep the Kiyubi in check, Hamaru said. The civilians council members were all smiling as he said that. Uzumaki Naruto, you are no longer a Konoha shinobi, you are banished from our village along with its allies. You will have your chakra sealed and will be expected to leave Konoha within 24 hours or you will be executed, Danzo said with a sly smile. You can't do that, I am the Hokage and I decide who is banished and who stays, Tsunade barked. I am afraid the daimyo of Fire Country has given us executive orders to handle the matter as we see fit and what we believe is in the best interest of Konoha, Uzumaki Naruto is an unstable Jinchuriki who can no longer serve as a Konoha shinobi, perhaps if he survives Akatsuki, he can become a farmer, Danzo said with a smile. The Anbu took Naruto away and placed him in a sealing chamber where they put a chakra suppressing seal on him and something else that he was unsure of what it was. All he knew about it was that it cut off the mental link he had with the Kyubi so they could no longer talk. 
What was sad about this whole thing was that it was Jiraiya who did the sealing of his person, and he didn't have one shred of guilt on his face as he did it either, nor did he have any when he had Naruto's name removed from the toad summoning scroll. Naruto was then forced to go to his apartment to gather what little belongings he had, but before he did, he used the last bit of chakra he could muster to make only a single shadow clone to go see Tsunade to wish her goodbye. While he was gathering what little he had, the village celebrated his banishment as that meant that the third's law about him was nullified in its entirety. All of the friend he used to have turned their backs on him as he walked towards the front gate, with the majority of them throwing junk as well as insults his way, while it hurt Naruto inside but not as much as you would think since he had mentally prepared for this sort of thing happening at some point in his life, as he walked towards the gate, he was stopped by a slap to the face, and the slap came from none other than Hinata herself, who had a look of rage on her face. How dare you, she growled out in malice, to think that at one point of my life I thought that I could love a monster such as you, just die and do the world a service. I have known about your feelings for me for quite some time, said Naruto as he began to slowly walk past her like she hadn't just slapped him in the face, and I believe that we could have had a future together myself, but now I can only pity any man you may end up with since you will most likely turn on him just as easily as you did to me. Naruto didn't even look back to see her shocked face, but instead walked out of the village, all the while with a smirk on his face. His shadow clone had dispersed and it was because of that that he was smirking since he knew the truth on why they did this. Jiraiya as well as Tsunade used the seal on his body which was linked to another one that was placed on all of the seals that only he could open. It was designed to activate upon his death so as to open up everything that was rightfully his so that they could rob him blind as well as smear his name into the ground as they did it. Tsunade had laughed about it since she had some gambling debts she needed to pay off and the Senju clan had run dry since she had gambled it all away over the years away from the village. And it was mainly that hidden fact that she came back to the village in the first place since she knew that as Hokage she could lay claim to the fortune of a dead clan with the permission of the daimyo, who obviously was on board with the whole thing since he wanted a portion of that money as well, now they just had to wait a few days for the seals to dig in deep enough to break free once the trigger happened. What not a single one of them was aware of was that Naruto had known about his inheritance for quite some time. He had used the night that he had stolen the forbidden scroll as a diversion since he knew that it wasn't a makeup test. And sent a clone to take his place in the forest as he went to clear out both accounts as well as the scrolls within his rightful home. He placed them in a pile of small scrolls that he had hidden away for the longest of times. But he moved it away from the village and placed it somewhere safe. Wave Country he had given it to Tazuna's family to hold on to without the knowledge of the rest of his squad. He had excused himself to take a quick piss, but in reality he had gathered his scrolls up and brought them along. Once their mission there was over he had given the scrolls to them for safekeeping, now while he may not be able to use jutsu due to the seal on his body, he had denied those who sought to rob him blind of their prize, so now we have caught up to current events in Naruto's life, and it was then that he wondered on where to go since he couldn't go to any allied village without them hunting him down to kill him. It was then that Naruto made a decision that would lead him down the path of greatness the likes the world had never seen. He decided to go to Wave just long enough to gather his stashed away scrolls and once there he sat down for dinner and explained why he was there in the first place. He told them everything about his life leading up to that point. Which made them upset about the whole situation, to which they offered him a place to stay. But Naruto knew that Konoha would send Nin to kill him as well as anyone who got in their way if he stayed. While he himself wasn't a seal master of any sort although the art of which ran through his genetics, he did know a tracking seal when he saw one so he planned to go to his ancestral home in the ruins of Whirlpool to see if he could learn enough about seals to remove what Jiraiya had put on him, so Tazuna gave him a boat as well as provisions to last him a while, and then Naruto set out on his way towards his destiny. Whirlpool, Naruto arrived at the ruins of his fallen clan and knelt down as he said a silent prayer for them. After he had done so, he sat down for a quick meal and set out to rummage through the ruins for something of use. But alas, no matter how much he looked, there was nothing that was able to help him since all texts were burnt and the scrolls he did find were messages and not jutsu or seals. It was in that moment that Naruto sat down in a huff as he watched the sun go down. Yet what surprised him was that it went down, he saw a campfire in the distance. Which shocked him since there should nt be anyone here at all in these ruins other than him. As he made his way towards the fire, he started to make out a lone figure sitting there on ground with his legs crossed, it was an old man with bulging muscles that looked out of place on an old man such as him, he had a beard that was long and grey along with the rest of the hair on his body, he wore pants as well as an open jacket that allowed Naruto to see scars on his chest that if looked at as a whole made the image of the big dipper. Hello there young man, said the man as he motioned for the boy to sit by the fire with him, please, have a seat by the fire, it has been quite some time since I have had the pleasure of company. 
Who are you? asked Naruto as he sat down by the fire to get warm. The manners of youngsters these days, grumbled the man as he took out a metal spike and skewered meat on it to roast over the fire, it is common courtesy for the young to introduce themselves to the old before the old introduce themselves to the young. Oh, said Naruto as he rubbed the back of his head sheepishly, sorry about that, my name is Naruto Uzumaki. An Uzumaki, said the man as he slowly rotated the meat that was cooking over the fire, so what brings an Uzumaki like you to the ruins of such a place? I understand the connection to one's ancestral home as much as the next man, but there is nothing here for you young man. Then why are you here old man, said Naruto as he was slightly pissed that this man had basically said that his quest was pointless. I am here since I am looking for someone to pass on my skills to, to take on my martial arts style s that it will not die out alongside me, I have searched for quite some time, but I have found no one who can truly unleash the power that I can, so I am afraid that I will never find a student, yet somewhere in my very soul itself I felt like there was a higher being that was telling me to wait here and my prayers would be answered, so my boy, what is your story? said the man as he handed Naruto some of the meat offered to him and began to eat and talk. Naruto told him his life story leading up to this point of his life as he had explained to Tazuna's family not too long ago, and he spared no details to paint the horrid picture that his life had become ever since he could remember it. Well that is a sad story, said the man as he stood up and wiped the flecks of meat that had fallen on him from eating off of him, and while I wish to tell you my own story, I am afraid that it must wait for a bit. Why is that? asked Naruto in confusion as the man threw a sand like powder into the fire, causing the light from it to burn brighter and reveled that they were surrounded by Konoha hunter Nin sent by the leaf to kill him on the orders of the Hokage. I do believe that the answer to that question is as clear as the light of day, said the man as he got into a defensive stance and motioned for Naruto to stay behind him. And judging from the killing intent they are leaking, talking in not a solution to this particular problem. The man then got into a strange combat stance that left Naruto mesmerized for reasons that he was unsure of. The shinobi attacked the old man, yet he never faltered and instead attacked them in retaliation. What shocked Naruto was the fact that the old man only had to touch his opponent with a single finger before they would begin to bulge in grotesque ways and then explodes into a bloody mess. The leaf shinobi were unsettled by this after they had seen it done the first few times since he had got about a fourth of them from the start. Yet they quickly attacked again from a distance this time with shuriken as well as kanai. One even had the proper mindset to throw an exploding kanai at the old man, but he just shrugged it off as he walked towards them with determination in his eyes, the shinobi at this point were stunned from the display of raw power that came from this man and made to retreat, but there would be none of that since the man made clones of himself, each charging energy to their hands, and in a split second, the shinobi that had come to kill the boy were themselves dead. Naruto looked at this man with nothing but admiration in his eyes. Who are you? asked Naruto for the second time. My name is Kanshiro, said the old man with a smirk on his face, and I have chosen you to be my student. After the nuclear war that had ravaged the planet and the death of his master Ryukin, Kanshiro had left with his fiancée, Yuria, to find a future for them somewhere in the post-apocalyptic world that they now found themselves in, however, their plans to find a home to start anew was ruined by Shin, a rival from the Nanto Koshuken school who then proceeded to defeat Kanshiro and engrave the trademark seven scars on his chest that would become a legend amongst those who would come to fear the man who wore those scars, before kidnapping Yuria for himself. Kanshiro survived his ordeal and spent the next year wandering the wasteland for revenge against the man who had taken his fiancée. During this time, he developed the killer instinct needed to survive in the war-torn age and befriended two young orphans. Bat and Lin, who followed him on his journey for some time before they themselves found a home to settle down in star families of their own. He discovered that Shin had assumed the title of king and was the leader of the eponymous king organization that he had come up against multiple times in his travels. After defeating Shin's four generals in hand-to-hand -hand combat, he infiltrated his capital city, Southern Cross, to settle things once and for all. Driven by his new strength, Kanshiro soundly defeated Shin in their fight but he was unfortunately too late to rescue Yuria herself. Before his death, Shin revealed to him that Yuria had already committed suicide to stop his violent ambition, refusing to die from Kanshiro's technique that he had used against him in their fight. Shin leapt to his death from his palace balcony, as Yuria did before him a while ago. The grieving Kanshiro continued to journey the wasteland after his vengeance was complete. Never staying at one place for too long, as the curse of Hokuto leaves only chaos in its wake. He made a career of destroying those who preyed on the weak and innocent such as the Golan, Jackal and the Fang clan, and built a reputation as a savior among the people. He also discovered that his three older brothers and fellow Hokuto Shinkan practitioners, Jagi, Toki and Rao, 
had all survived the nuclear holocaust and had gone their separate ways to seek their destiny elsewhere, Jaggi, the second youngest, had long hated Kanshiro and was at that point of time committing acts of carnage in his name to ruin his reputation, it was also revealed that Jaggi manipulated Shin into taking Yuria in the first place, as well as kidnapped Ri's sister, Iri, and murdered their parents. Kanshiro caught up with Jaggi and subjected him to a gruesome death befitting his crimes. Kanshiro then fought against his second oldest brother, Toki, who had succumbed to madness after the apocalypse. But this was in fact an imposter named Amoeba, a jealous rival of Tokus who was impersonating him to do to him as Jaggi had tried to do to Kanshiro himself. The real Toki was in fact imprisoned at the prison known as Cassandra by Rao. The eldest brother, who had taken the title Ken-O, King of Fists, and aimed to bring order to the world by any means necessary. With the help of Rei and Mamiya, Kanshiro toppled the great prison and was reunited with Toki, he would go on to become a valuable ally to Kanshiro in his journey and intervene during his first fight with Rao, as they were on the verge of killing one another which if it had happened would have caused a major power rift since many people would try to fill in the leadership position. Kanshiro then joined forces with a man named Shu, the leader of a guerrilla outfit who was fighting against Souther. The holy emperor and master of Nanto Hu Ken, who enslaved children to build his empire. Kanshiro was defeated by Souther in their first fight when his vital point attacks had no effect on Souther's body. On the brink of death, Kanshiro was rescued by Shu's son. Shiva, who gave his life to aid his escape, however, in retaliation, Souther stormed the rebel hideout and had Shu executed at the summit of the Holy Pyramid. Kanshiro recovered from his wounds and this time he uncovered Souther's secret. His heart was on the opposite side and the position of his vital points were reversed. Kanshiro took pity on Souther's tragic past that he told him while dying and killed him with a merciful technique, bringing an end to the Holy Emperor's reign. With the final battle with Rao drawing ever closer by the day, the mysterious last Nanto general emerged to challenge Rao's conquest, it turned out that the general's identity was none other than Yuria. Kanshiro's betrothed who he thought had died, in actuality, she had been saved by the Nanto Goshese after attempting suicide at Shin's palace and her survival was kept a secret to protect her from Rao. Kanshiro fought Rao using the ultimate Hokuto Shinkan technique Muso Tensai. Drawing on his profound sadness from thinking he had lost the love of his life to make Rao tremble in fear for the first time in ages and retreat. However, Rao kidnapped Yuria during his escape and prepared to kill the woman he loved since it would imbue him with the same sorrow. Kanshiro and Rao had their final battle at the Hokuto Renkidoza, with Rao having killed Yuria to unlock Muso Tensai as well so that they could fight on equal terms. Yet Kanshiro's greater understanding of life and death gave him the edge over his older brother and led him to victory over his brother, Yuria awoke after the battle, as Ro had actually put her into a false state of death when he realized she was terminally ill, after Ro's death, Kanshiro spent his next few years living in peace with Yuria, whose disease had been subdued by Ro's power as a final parting gift from his brother. Kanshiro traveled with his fiancée for the few years that they had together in bliss. But while they were happy to be together, they were saddened that Yuria's terminal illness prevented them from having any children. So in time Kanshiro was forced to bury his beloved. But not before finding a priest that performed the marriage ceremony so that they were officially man and wife. He buried her on top of a mountain that no one else would dare to climb to ensure that the burial site would never be disturbed. After he had buried her, he knelt down and said a silent prayer for her soul, and as he climbed down the mountain, he let one tear fall from his eye. The tear that fell hit the ground and in the years that followed would fertilize the ground so that a single rose would appear on her grave, Kanshiro then continued his endless journey to help those in need. As the years passed and his body aged, he had sought out another to take up the mantle of becoming the Hokuto master. But no matter how far he looked, he had not found the right person to teach it to. He began to travel east for reasons that were beyond him and by doing so he found something that genuinely surprised him. There was a massive wall that blocked off a section of the world for reasons he could not understand as to why they would in the first place. So he set out to find the proper materials that would allow him to climb over the wall. It took some time to accomplish his goal since there was no buildings or salvage anywhere near the wall so he had to make multiple expeditions to form not only a ladder to climb the wall. But to get back down once on the other side as well, he finally succeeded in creating the ladders he would need, and once he got to the top, he was amazed at what he saw from the top of the wall beyond it was a world that was untouched by the nuclear war that had destroyed the rest of the world, so once he got down from the wall, he carefully hid the ladders so that in the worst possible situation, he would be able to return to the other side. He began his travels in the elemental countries, but to his dismay. No one understood him so he wandered aimlessly since he was unable to communicate with anyone he found. It was because of his defense of a helpless village against the forces of Iwi that spread his legend as the lone warrior since no one knew his name. 
Out of the large group of Iwishinobi that had attacked the small village there was but one survivor of that defense, it was a man named Onoki who would later become the third Suchakage, it was because of his fight with Kanshuro that he had back problems for the rest of his life, yet after what he had seen happen to the rest of the shinobi that had attacked alongside him he knew that he had gotten off light. For years he traveled the elemental countries and fought anyone who challenged him. And his luck finally changed when he arrived in the village of Whirlpool itself. It was the Uzumaki there that helped him understand the state of the world on this side of the planet by taking the time to teach him their language as well as the history of their founding that went all the way back to the Sage of the Six Paths. In return for their help he promised to come back and train one of their own in the future near the end of his life so that his style would be able to continue on. The Uzumaki began to see him as family, and he even had some women attempt to seduce him since he was an Adonis in their eyes and would have happily bared his child, yet they were shut down after he told them that his heart had only beat for one woman and she was gone and while many a woman would just try harder in their pursuit of seducing him, they understood as well as respected him for it. A few years later, after he fully understood the world itself, he set out on his endless journey once more since it had been his entire life to travel and he wasn't one to settle down anywhere. Yet before he left the village, the clan head met with him and gave him the only spare key to the vault of the Uzumaki that contained copies of everything that they had made over the years since it was always good to have the copies protected in the off chance that their village was attacked and burned down along with the knowledge it gained. Little did he know when he left that he would never see the Uzumaki clan again since the second shinobi war had begun and their deaths would come quickly and unexpectedly. Years later, word came to him that the clan had been wiped out during the war. And it was then that he returned to the ruins of their people. He felt a deep sadness seeing the ruins of the once great clan since he believed that not only could he have aided them and kept them alive if he had stayed. But now he was unable to fulfill his promise to them since they were all gone, so with a heavy heart he decided to settle down within the ruins and spend the rest of his life constantly reminded that he could have stayed and helped, and there he remained with the small glimmer of hope that one day that there would be another Uzumaki to return to their ancestral home so that he could fulfill his promise. And that is my story, said Kanshuro as he sat near the fire explaining his life story to his new student. I remained here since I had believed with a small glimmer of hope that there was still an Uzumaki out there to teach as I promised. So you will teach me how to fight as you did against those shinobi not too long ago, asked Naruto hopefully since he believed with that type of power and skill he could help many people as well as get his revenge against his former village. That is true, said the man as threw Naruto a blanket since it was now time to sleep since they would begin his training in the morning. Naruto took the blanket and wrapped himself with it. And as soon as he did, he felt sleep hit him fast since he was unaware of just how sleepy he really was. Kanshuro looked at his sleeping form, but he frowned as he felt the boy's energy was completely out of whack. He used his enhanced senses to see that all of the boy's energy was being siphoned into the seal that had been placed on him by his old mentor. And that the demon inside him was also adding to it. He could only make an educated guess as to what it would do when Naruto was killed but he wasn't going to wait on the off case that it exploded from too much energy, he charged energy into his fingertips and punctured Naruto in the chest area with them, once he did, the energy began to return to where it was supposed to go, like when you draw a wet line on the concrete and then spill water near it, the water will then follow the line that was drawn. Naruto was forced awake from the sudden unexpected flow of his chakra returning to him, but then there was a surge of immense pain as the energy that had been stored into the seal for the past week burst through his body, it caused his body to bulge out with muscles, the skin on his body ripping open from the sudden growth, yet just as quickly as it had been ripped open from the surge of power. It began to heal with the help from the demon within, but then there was another surge of power that then blasted out of his chest in a shot of crimson energy, the energy hit the ground and formed into the Kyubi himself, but instead of the massive sized demonic creature that had terrorized the leaf village years ago before it was sealed away in Naruto. How is this possible? asked the Kyubi as he sensed that Naruto had passed out from the pain. Naruto's body has been drastically altered from what it once was, as instead of the weak malnourished kid who had just began to gain some muscles that he was, he was now as Kanshuro was with huge bulging muscles that had ripped his shirt right off his body, but his pants had at least stayed on since they were stretchy, Kayubi sensed that while he still had his freedom from the seal, a large portion of his power was still in the boy and d it was from that power that his wounds were healing. I am not quite sure myself, said Kanshuro as he gave the boy a quick look over to see that everything was still in place. Seeing that Naruto was still alive and well as well as the quick muscle growth. He smirked since he would be able to train him in a far quicker manner since the first part of the training would have been to help him build up the muscle mass that he would need to master his style. Now they could skip the seven years of intense training that it would have taken to build up his muscles and skip right to the style itself, but my best guess is when I rearranged the chakra within him back the way it was, 
The backlash of doing so caused the energy stored in the seal that was siphoning energy from him to break not only itself but the seal that kept you inside him as well. Well how about that, said the Kyubi as he laid down for the night since while he felt a fraction of his former power return to him, he was not going to regain the full amount any time soon. So what will you do now that you have gained your freedom, asked Kanshiro as he sat down himself since he felt no trace of killing intent coming from him so he had no need to defend himself from the demon. I will do as I have done for years and stay by the kid's side, said the Kyubi as he curled up into a ball to sleep. Why not take this chance to leave and live your own life away from the boy who was basically your mobile jail cell? It is because the boy interests me, said Kyubi, since I have been with him since his birth I have looked after him since the beginning. I have seen a boy with so much potential that was being suppressed since those who looked after him were keeping him weak so as to control him. I protected him mainly since it was more to protect myself since if he died then I would as well, but I began to grow attached since I saw a boy who had the potential to be great and wanted to do just that, so I aided him where I could, now that I am free, I wish to see where he will go and what sort of man he will become since to me it is a sort of entertainment to see such a thing unfold. Then this training journey will be fun for you, said Kanshiro as he shut his eyes to sleep for the night. Indeed it will be, growled Kayubi as he fell asleep. Leaf Village, as Naruto slept from the pain he had endured from having his seal altered internally. The seals that had been set to protect what was rightfully his in the village all shattered at once. Those who had been waiting for this moment celebrated the success of their plan with a few drinks before they set out to retrieve what wasn't theirs to take in the first place. Yet once they went to the bank to gather their ill-gotten gains. Their feeling of triumph quickly turned into ones of utter shock as well as rage since there was not a single cent left in either the Uzumaki nor in the Namikaze vaults. They began to worry about what they might find in the Namikaze estate, and as they arrived, they saw that their fears were well founded since they searched the whole house over and yet could not find a single scroll, not one shred of knowledge that they could use, it was then that they realized that all their years of planning had borne no fruit and it had all been for absolutely nothing, the screams of rage could be heard from everyone in Fire Country shortly after they realized that fact. Seven years later, Naruto stood on the wall that separated the desolate side of the world to the side that he had been born into. He stood seven feet tall and five inches, with bulging muscles that were clearly visible since his clothes matched what his master Kanshiro had worn himself for years. The only variation to the clothes was the fact that his outfit had a hood that covered his head so you could see his hair. Which he had cut short, Hokage Naruto haircut from Boruto, and a bandana that covered up all of his face except for his eyes, he had a pack slung over his shoulder that was filled with the scrolls that he had taken from the vault of Whirlpool so as to train in his clan's style as well as the Hokuto since while Kanshiro had explained that he would be trained in his style but every master of it had developed their own style of it that had increased its power into what it was today. Naruto smirked as he jumped down from the top of the wall towards the ground. Yet used his chakra to use the winds to soften the blow so as to not break his legs from doing so. Once he did so, he heard a soft thud beside him as Kayubi landed there. While over the seven years worth of training which Kanshiro brought him towards the worst part of the world to help him toughen up against the worst possible things that life could possibly throw at him. And he took to all that he taught him like a sponge, plus since his chakra was once more flowing through his body he was able to use shadow clones to master the techniques taught to him in a fraction of the time it took Kanshiro himself, Kanshiro grew proud that he learned so fast, and it was soon after his training was complete that Kanshiro died, but before he did he asked Naruto only one favor as he handed him a crudely made map. Bury me next to my wife, those were his final words before he passed on. And like he had asked he carried his body up the mountain that Kanshiro himself had climbed years ago and buried him next to his wife. He said a silent prayer as Kanshiro once did himself. And used a seal to encase the rose in a glass bubble so that it would survive for many years. Once he had done so he set back out towards the elemental nations so as to begin his own journey of revenge. He made it back, but had to deal with quite a few gangs of bandits as well along the way to which he killed using the techniques that his master had spent years training him in. He had learned to work alongside his partner Kayubi in a way that would make the Inazuka clan jealous since they were in perfect sync. Then again the Biju had spent years sealed within him so he knew how the boy thought and moved accordingly, he had grown to the size of a miniature horse, but was able to shrink down to a size that was invisible to the naked eye, which helped him since he could sneak attack anyone who tried to hurt his friend. He could also siphon energy from Naruto himself to grow to his maximum size but could only do so for a few minutes at the most. The two of them made the trip to Whirlpool, where they entered the vault once more like he did seven years ago. He took the time to carefully place the scrolls back where he found them in the first place since while there may not be any other Uzumaki to claim them at the moment, he did plan to have children in the future to continue his bloodline so he would keep these scrolls in pristine condition to pass down to his kids in the future, 
And now that everything was where it was meant to go, he set out on the first destination that he wanted to set out for in his journey for revenge, Wave Country. Leaf Village. What do you mean the spring daimyo refused the marriage proposal? Yelled a very pissed off Tsunade. Standing in front of her desk was Jiraiya with a serious expression on his face as well. It's just as I said, she ripped up the scroll that had the proposal on it in front of me when I arrived he told her, he usually isn't one to get serious about things but the loss of all their alliances as well as their trading rights in the last seven years was an exception for that type of mentality. Damn it. The marriage proposal between her and Sasuke was vital to the village's survival, we need allies for the war that is coming she growled while biting her thumbnail, she turned to Jiraiya and asked, do you have any idea on who else to turn to here? We need either allies or resources to sell so we could hire people to aid us. Sorry but I've got nothing, said Jiraiya sadly, but after we had Naruto killed there is no one willing to help us, not even Taki is willing to help us since it would be essentially suicide for them to side with us in the upcoming war with Iwa and Kumo. We'll have to send out scouts in the area to see if they can track any movement from the enemy's forces, said Tsunade with a sigh while she takes a seat in her chair, she straightens out and gets serious. Having the brat killed Wad by far the worst plan we had in quite some time. If only he was still alive to this day, I could get my hands on that brat and wring his neck for all this while beating out the location of the funds he stole from us years ago, she thought with obvious disdain. You may be right about that, but at least my spy network spans all over the elemental nations, so we will at least know when the enemy is making a move against us. Tsunade rolled her eyes at Jiraiya's obvious bragging. These past seven years had been hard on the entire village since when word got out about Naruto's banishment. The people he had helped outside of the village were outraged by such a thing. But that outrage only intensified a hundredfold once they heard the rumors on Naruto being killed on the orders of the Hokage and since no one could find him anywhere they assumed that the rumors were true, and now that all allies they had as well as any trading agreement they had in the past were all gone. Their enemies saw this as the perfect moment to strike at them and both Kumo and Iwa joined forces to kill them once and for all while plundering their village as they did. Tsunade sighs and waves her hand in a non-caring manner, just find out anything that you can that will aid us in some way, speaking of which, how is Sasuke's training with the Toads going? She asked, knowing that he had let Sasuke sign his name in the Toads contract as a sign of good faith by telling him that it would help him gain the power to kill his brother in the future but there was an added secret to the offer, since it was also an easy way to bring back the best if he tried to run off again since Jiraiya could then just reverse summon him. It's going at a slow pace, I and Pa have started his more advanced techniques training as well as his senjutsu training, but it's taking a lot of effort for him to master it, I can't even remember the amount of times that Pa had to stop him before he almost turned into a statue, everyone's pitching in to help but. But what? She asked while narrowing her eyes at her fellow Sanin. Jiraiya awkwardly chuckled while he also scratched the back of his head in an obvious show of nervousness, the elder toad doesn't seem too keen on us training the kid in the first place, he's even babbling about some new prophecy that he never seems to shut up about, it's all he's willing to talk about these days and it is truly starting to get annoying. What did he say about this new prophecy? asked the slug Sanin with interest. Well, if you want it in full word for word, he said that the man with the power to bring stability to chaos itself will perish, and yet his power will go to another that the one who was gifted such power will himself become even stronger than his master ever was, told Jiraiya with a shrug, he really wasn't too worried about what the elder toad said since he was getting on in years and is most likely going senile in his old age. Tsunade on the other hand, felt a sense of dread but she wasn't quite sure why she was feeling such a thing all of a sudden. Like Jiraiya, she didn't believe in superstitious warnings given by a 500 year old toad but something about it feels off to her in some way. Putting the prophecy to the back of her head, for later thoughts, she goes back to talking about the current issue, when the daimyo hears about the proposal falling through, we will have serious problems on our hands, she said while interlocking her fingers together and took a serious looking expression, I knew I should have somehow sweetened the deal so the bitch would bite. So what happens now? If he cuts our budget, we won't last very long, and the other villages are already not afraid to use our moment of weakness to their advantage, said Jiraiya with a look of worry. There's only one answer that can help us with our problems, Tsunade said with a smirk. Oh, and what brilliant plan are you thinking? asked Jiraiya, listening with interest on how she's going to help the village get back up to its former status as the strongest village out of the five. We invade Wave Country, and here I thought you actually had a good plan, sighed Jiraiya in disappointment. Wave Country is pretty much the embodiment of trade routes nowadays, if we take over the country, we will be the ones in control of the trading among the world it won't just improve our economy but raise moral as well, plus once taken over we could finally change the name of the bridge to erase the memory of the brat once and for all, she explained with a smirk. Well, that's good and all but what about the other villages and countries, 
want they retaliate if one of the neutral countries, which you have just stated yourself as being the main center of trade in the elemental countries, is suddenly invaded by us? Jiraiya asked with a hint of nervousness in his tone, he can't be blamed since so many countries and villages against their own isn't something that he believes Leaf can handle, even during their strongest years. Tsunade scowled at his response, let them try and retaliate, by the time they get word of it, we will already have control over wave as well as leverage with all the civilians, they won't try with the chance we kill them. Fine, I'll head out to check up with my spy network and make sure that everything is ready by the time you get the needed forces for this plan of yours, he said as he walked towards the window to jump out of. And maybe get some research done before heading out, he thought to himself with a perverted giggle before jumping out of the office. After he left the room, Tsunade took out an empty scroll from the drawer in her table and wrote down a few teams that she will need to send to attack Wave, she won't need too many since Wave only has a dozen or two of hired samurai who should NT be much trouble for a few squads of Chunin and Jonin. Wave one week later, what is the world coming to nowadays, an awesome bridge like that and they name it after the demon brat, spat out a leaf Chunin as he looks over the large bridge they are guarding, along with him are three more Chunin whose sole duty was to make sure nobody gets in or out of the village without a higher up's permission. I know what you mean. I can't wait till they finally call it the Great Uchiha Bridge, it has a better ring to it, remarked a second Chunin. I disagree said a cold voice behind the two distracted Chunin. Standing behind them is a large figure who was wearing an open jacket that showed off his abs which made the female of the group slightly blush since she had to admit that he was very well built. The other two Chunin noticed the mon's sudden arrival and jumped back to get distance on him, the other two Chunin aren't so lucky when they find their torsos detached from their lower body after the strange man poked them in the chest. They bled out while screaming in pain since they had felt their bodies rip quite laterally in half across the torso. The remaining Chunin pulled out Kanai to fight the stranger, but both looked nervous since he did just kill two of their comrades in a second in a manner that was overly gruesome. In their minds, they are trying to think of ways on how he got so close to them without them seeing or sensing him coming in the first place. The leaf has truly gotten lazy since I left it, what a pity, it'll make killing you less of a challenge, spoke the strange man as he brought his full attention to the two remaining Chunin. He lifted his hands in a combat stance that they were unfamiliar with so they didn't know what to expect, so they charged him together in an attempt to kill him with their teamwork, but all the strange man did was flick the woman in the head while he shoved the man back hard. Kumiko, make a run back to the village and call for reinforcements, he'll hold him off while you're gone, ordered the male of the Chunin. Are you sure you can handle him? He seems pretty strong, she said with uncertainty but the male glares back at her in annoyance. Just go, I got this he said, determined. She nods and makes a dash down the bridge towards the under siege village of Wave to warn them of the strange man. You're already dead, said the man as he watched Kumiko stop mid step as her body began to bulge out in a bubbling manner. She then violently exploded the sheer horror of the male Chunin who was still alive. Kumiko, shouted the other Chunin, arrogance, you believe that I would simply let her go that easily. You're definitely a leaf nin, all right, chuckled the stranger before he quickly rushed forward faster than the male Chunin can follow with his eyes. The male Chunin felt his hand bend against his will and grabbed his own throat before it began to tighten around it. Please have mercy, said the man in a barely audible voice. I don't know why you are begging me for mercy when it is you who is killing yourself, said the stranger as he continued to walk towards the village. He heard the snap as the mon's neck broke and continued onwards to become the hero the town needed for the second time in his life, and as he walked towards his destination, he couldn't help but smirk since this was going to be so very one sided. In the town center stood a large podium with six hanging ropes in loops there that had been recently knotted to hang their intended victims. They were currently hung around the necks of six of the town's civilians with three of them being Tsunami, Inari and Tazuna themselves. The reason for this is because they are the largest supporters for Naruto as well as the biggest haters to the leaf since his death was made known to the world so they are being made an example of to show the others that they will have to fall in line or else they would suffer the same fate. Standing around the raised podium are the other civilians in the town who can do nothing other than just watch as the six are going to be hanged in front of them. Some tried to stop them from killing them but the leaf nin surrounding the podium are holding everyone back from trying to interfere with the execution. Two of the shinobi there just so happened to be the duo, Azumo and Kotetsu, the infamous Konoha guards. Monsters. You're all fucking monsters. Why are you doing this to them? Don't kill them. Please, people of Wave, these criminals have been convicted of keeping S-class details from the leaf. Therefore they shall be sentenced to death as so ordered by our Hokage, declared a Jonin on top of the podium. Liars! You scum invade our country and expect us to believe that bull. Leaf can burn in hell for all we care. Killers, traitors, scum. Silence! Roared the Jonin who used his killing intent to silence the crowd. The execution will now commence, 
He nods to the executioner who nods back and grabs the lever to release the floors underneath the six people chosen to be executed. Stop! Let my son go! He has nothing to do with this! cried and begged Tsunami while Tazuna glared and cursed at the leaf nin and all the while Inari sobs away in fear of his unavoidable death. Before the executioner can go through with pulling the lever, a loud bang fills the air, silence envelops the town as nobody makes a move and after what feels like hours, but is actually seconds, the executioner collapses onto his side with a hole in his chest. Then all hell broke loose, wave citizens all dispersed with shouts and screams of terror while the leaf nin tense up for a fight since they figured one was coming. What was that? shouted a chunin whose head jerks back from a sudden projectile that struck him in the head with enough force to break his neck. Courtesy of a strange hooded man who was calmly walking towards them as he tossed a few rocks up and down in his hand, the leaf nin either widened their eyes or gasped when they saw the man stand there who had somehow managed to throw a small rock with enough force to not only break a mon's neck but to penetrate through a mon's chest through sheer power alone. A gust of wind causes the jonin on the podium to cross his arms across his face, the wind stops, and when he was able to see as well as the others with him, he saw that the strange man was gone, but he felt something sinking into the back of his neck. Die, whispered the stranger before he channeled chakra through his fingers that he had sunk into the mon's neck and watch as his head exploded out the front of his face, taking the corpse he threw it towards the other shinobi as both an open challenge to try and kill him as well as a clear example of what would happen if they tried, he then used his hands to easily slice the ropes so that the victims wouldn't die. Thank you stranger said Tazuna as he rubbed his throat once he got the rope off of it. It was no problem at all Tazuna, said the stranger as he ripped the rope off of Inari's neck. How do you know my name? Is it so strange for a friend to know your name? said the stranger before he pulled his hood off to show them his face. Big bro! muttered Inari when he recognizes the blonde hair even though it had been cut short and the whisker marks on his hero's face. Wow, look at you Inari! You're not a runt anymore said Naruto with a smirk as he rubbed the top of the teen's head in a fatherly fashion. Tsunami and Tazuna both looked at him in surprise since they didn't expect him to come to their rescue yet again since they along with the rest of the world had been told that he had died seven years ago, they were even more surprised by his threatening appearance, yet Tsunami blushed heavily as she looked him over and saw the bulging muscles that he had on him, she couldn't help but have a brief fantasy about him, but in the end she shook it out of her head. Now go, I don't want anyone hurt from the fighting. He told them while pointing towards the direction of their home, we will talk more about this when I am done here, the family of course didn't really feel exactly safe as he said that since there was still quite a few leaf shinobi surrounding him, and they began to wonder if Naruto would be able to defend against all of them, but they decided to trust him and quickly left the area to allow Naruto to fight the invaders without distraction. Naruto saw two chunin running behind them to get to the group. But he quickly put a stop to that as he appeared between them in a burst of speed. Surprising the chunin. One of them finds Naruto's whole arm in his stomach while the other one can only take a step back before Naruto punches him hard in the gut. Naruto then whipped the dead chunin off his arm and quickly punched the other one multiple times all over his body before he kicked him toward a group of shinobi, before the body even hit the ground it exploded into bloody chunks, with his bones becoming short-range shrapnel that hit multiple shinobi in various places, none of the damage done by the sharp bits of bones was life-threatening, but they were painful since they did puncture the skin. The leaf nin looked at this man with a look of both shock and horror as they saw their comrade just explode in front of them. Wait a second, isn't that Naruto? asked Azumo who recognized the whisker marks on the blonde, this shocked all who heard this since the demon brat was supposed to be dead for the past seven years, so they all began to wonder how the hell was he still alive, and where had he been to gain such muscles and power? A Ajanin notices this as well and grins since it was a golden opportunity to aid their village for the coming war. Change of plans, Capture the Kiyubi and bring him back to Leaf. Lady Hokage will grant us a large reward if we return to the village with the demon. Smirking, Naruto walked towards the group as he began to slowly crack his knuckles as he did so, every crack they heard made them begin to feel unsettled as he did it, and he silently reveled in the fact that they were unnerved by him simply cracking his knuckles. Give up demon, said one of the chunin that remained as he brandished his sword in preparation for the fight they would have, look around you, there is forty of us and only one of you boy, you have no chance of victory here. Naruto then began to laugh as he stood there, and doubled over as the laughter got harder to the point that a tear fell from his eye. And what exactly did you find funny about that? It's just funny to me that you suck so hard at math, said Naruto as he wiped the tear from his eye and calmed himself down from laughing so hard. And what the fuck is that supposed to mean? You said that there are 40 of you, said Naruto as he folded his arms in front of him, yet I only count 20 of you, as soon as he said that. The twenty shinobi that had gotten hit by the bone shrapnel exploded into multiple bloody chunks, 
Naruto had learned that since he was able to use chakra, which Kanshiro was unable to, he was able to use his Hokuto techniques to overpower and corrupt his enemy's chakra system to force them to violently explode like they just did. Earth Style Earth Spikes Jutsu Spikes of rock rise up from the out of the ground and hit Naruto square in the chest. The shinobi smiled as they see this since they thought that they had won so easily. Yet their smiles quickly faded as they saw that the attack hadn't hurt him and instead broke off at the tip with Naruto standing there looking unimpressed. He quickly then charged forward towards the person who had used the attack on him and grabbed his arms. He quickly pulled them down hard to the point that those around him heard the snapping of bone. He then swiped his hand across his neck in a hard sudden motion that broke his neck that made his body fall forward. To which Naruto kicked off his head and grabbed it before it got too far. He then spun around and threw it hard to the point that it impaled another shinobi directly in the chest. He fell over dead, the entire time feeling the head moving inside him. One of the main lessons that Kanshiro told him during his training was to be the most unpredictable that you possibly could, to use shock and awe to horrify your opponent so that they will make mistakes and be far easier to decimate. Retreat. Fall back to the village. Ordered the last living Jonin who ran towards the bridge along with most of the other Chunin. What about the demon? Asked another Chunin who runs alongside the Jonin. We'll have to bring reinforcements from Leaf but at least we now know where he has been hiding for all these years. As they reached to the end of the bridge that connected Wave Country to Fire Country, they noticed a large shadow that was hiding in the fog, and to their utter horror, the Kyubi himself came out of the fog and roared at them in rage, and before they could even put up any form of defense that in the end would ultimately fail since not a single one of them was capable of blocking the power behind his attack, he blew out a stream of fire that roasted them alive where they stood and burned them down to nothing but ash which then blew into the wind. Back in town, five Chunin were still fighting against Naruto himself. Unaware to the fact that they were the last of the Leaf Nin in the entire country. They all looked tired and sore except for Naruto who was grinning away at them with not a single scratch on him and from looks alone you could tell that he was winded in the slightest, in his left hand is a heart that he caught from the current Chunin that he had killed. Since once he exploded Naruto caught the heart in his hand which he then crushed with his hand while looking at the shinobi who were still there who actually thought that they could take him out by themselves. They were all proven wrong in the worst possible way. How the hell is the demon brat this strong? Wasn't he supposed to be weak? Exclaimed a chunin with a scar going down his face. Everyone feels a shudder go up their spines when Naruto smirks which shows them that he is just playing with them and hasn't taken this fight seriously since the very beginning, along with his bulging muscles as well as his intimidating aura, it just further proved to them that he was the Kiyubi in human form. Anyone can change after 7 years, I just changed for the better while you and the rest of that rotting village have gotten weak, chuckled Naruto, I was free to learn more than your village would allow me to sense than I would be too powerful to control and they were right to fear my power since look at what I have been able to do in such a short time, your forces are dead, and I still stand no matter what you throw at me. Azumo and Katetsu grit their teeth in frustration since it's obvious to them that Naruto is a lot stronger than any of them and the both of them are beginning to think of making a run back to the village since it was becoming more apparent that they would not win here, before they could order a full retreat, a chunin to their left starts to quickly fly through hand seals. Earth Style Mud Slide Jutsu the floor liquefies and heads towards Naruto as a wave of mud. A second chunin goes through her own hand signs and shoots a bolt of lightning at the wave, making it a lot more dangerous and the third chunin runs around the wave to attack the blonde if the two jutsus fail, the large wave of lightning enhanced mud threatens to swallow Naruto whole if it wasn't for him lifting his hand up up over himself and bringing it down in a simple karate chopping motion, the wave splits apart and flows past him and through it all, he doesn't even blink as it happens. B but, how? Stuttered a chunin in fear while he takes a few steps back from Naruto in fear. How? I was trained by a man who taught me how to do things that many would deem impossible, what I just did was proof of that, Naruto answered, his ears twitched and without even looking, he moved to the right to dodge the downward sword slash and grabbed the back of the mon's head, he then began to squeeze his head to the point that his eyes exploded out his head, he then slammed the body into the ground, smashing the head into paste as he did so. Screw this, I am out yelled a chunin who turned to make a run for it. Coward, don't run, we can win this, shouted the only remaining kunoichi of the invasion forces, Azumo and Katetsu glance at each other and wonder if they should follow the mon's lead. Honestly, I think he made the smart move, sadly, the results won't be any different than if he had stayed and fought, Naruto's enhanced eyes could clearly see through the forestry and he watched as the chunin lost his head after running straight into the kayubi who was waiting on the outskirts of town in wait for this very situation and bit his head clean off. Water style. Starch syrup binding rope. Yelled Azumo, who spits out a high viscosity water rope, 
Kotetsu summoned his edge blade and runs at Naruto in hopes to skewer him with it. The other chunin holds two kanai in a reverse grip and follows Kotetsu's example by charging as well. The water rope wraps around Naruto's left arm and tightens its grip. Azumo smirked as it did because all he has to do is pull the rope and the demon will lose his arm from his action. However, his plan changes when Naruto conducts lightning chakra into his arm which connects to the rope of water and conducts off of it. While he was trained for years on how to use the Hokuto, he was still able to use chakra in such a way to manipulate the elements, before Azumo can cancel the jutsu, the lightning reached him and shocks him with a current of a high voltage of electricity, causing him to scream in pain as it happened, he fell to the floor in pain, unable to move due to the lightning messing up his nervous system. Katetsu swings his sword at Naruto, but Naruto counters by grabbing it with his bare hand and breaking the blade with pure strength alone into various sized pieces. The other chunin charges but Naruto sees her so he kicks Katetsu away and swipes at the kunoichi with his hand, she quickly replaces herself with a log, which finds itself cut in half from the chop, before she can try the same technique for a second time, Naruto throws one piece of the chopped log, the sharpest one of the two sides, at her and impales her through the chest and through a tree, she clawed at the log impaled in her chest in vain as she slowly bled out from it. Cracking his neck and his knuckles as he stood there, Naruto grins at the two remaining chunin, one still on the floor, come on, I've got all day and literally thousands of ways to kill you. We can't win, we can't fight this, demon, thought Katetsu who is finally starting to fear for his life after seeing the entire invasion force die by Naruto's hands. He puts a hand into his weapons pouch and grabs what he needs from within it. He pulls out three smoke bombs and throws them at the floor, a large cloud of smoke erupts and covers Katetsu and Azumo, yet Naruto just finds it just annoying since even though he can't see them with the naked eye, he was still able to sense them clear as day, he pulsed his chakra, which blows away the smoke to show that both Katetsu and Azuma were gone, but he already could sense that before he pulsed his chakra in the first place. The hunt's on, said Naruto as he smirked and stretched his legs, he took his time as he did so since he was not really in any sort of hurry here, once he stretched his legs fully, he got into a runner's position and then charged in the direction he sensed that they had gone with enough power and speed to crack the ground below him. Three miles away from where Naruto had just been, Katetsu was jumping from tree to tree with his friend on his shoulder. Damn, I never thought the brat would get so strong, said Katetsu, Azumo couldn't reply since he was still feeling the paralyzing effects of Naruto's lightning attack, but he nods his head to show his agreement but winces at the struggle of doing so since his nerves were on fire. They land on another tree branch, only for it to fall when the tree that it was attached to was punched over which made the branch that they were aiming for no longer available, thinking fast, Katetsu jumps off of it and throws a kanai with wire wrapped around the end of it, the kanai sticks into another branch and he swings to the floor while still holding Azumo, both land to their feet, although Azumo does it with difficulty since his feet were still shot. Hello boys, miss me? asked Naruto in a mocking tone, with a big grin on his face as well as he stood there with his arms crossed in front of him. How the hell did you catch up to us? We had a head start on you, said Katetsu with wide eyes. You're talking to the guy who got away from Anbu when he was ten, deadpanned the blonde, so catching up to the two of you was no real challenge. Fucking brat, why didn't you just die like everyone believed you did seven years ago? This time, Naruto loses all traces of humor and instead releases his chakra in an intimidating way. Azumo and Katetsu are blown back when a pillar of blood red chakra erupts and pierces the sky above. Nearby trees are blown from the force, and even the wind seems to be trying to get away from the foul chakra. Azumo's body was unable to handle the strain of having so much pressure on him at once and died from it. Kotesu was not so lucky since Naruto had quickly charged forward and stabbed him in the brain with a single finger laced with his chakra. You are the only survivor of this invasion, said Naruto as Kotetsu stood there in a brain dead sort of fashion. So I want you to leave here and walk back towards that corrupt place you call home. Once you return there, I want you to give Tsunade a message for me, he then leaned in and whispered the message that he wanted him to relay to her, once he had said what he wanted to say, he pulled his finger out of Katetsu's head and watched as the now brain dead shinobi began to slowly walk towards the leaf, he guessed that at the rate he was going that it would take a week and a half at least to return and deliver the message he wanted him to. Naruto then made a shadow clone that he had head towards Tazuna's house while he headed away from wave country since he needed to be elsewhere at the moment but he made a mental note to return since there was someone who he wanted to see again here and he was sure she would be glad to see him again as well. Leaf Village. A week and a half later, is there any news from our forces in Wave Country? Tsunade asked her assistant, Shizun who shakes her head as a negative. No word as of yet, could there have been a chance that they've been defeated? Tsunade just shakes her head no, that's impossible, Wave Country only has a few samurai at best, 
the force I sent should have been enough to capture the country. I am just wondering why I haven't gotten a message from them yet, remarked Tsunade in confusion. They haven't called in because they're all dead, Tsunade and Shizun look over to the open window to see Jiraiya sitting on it with a serious face. Dead, how could they have died? I gave them a simple mission to capture a small weak country and they still failed. Yelled Tsunade in disbelief. Jiraiya sighs to himself, knowing that what he's gonna say next will most likely tip her over the edge but she needs to know this since it was important to know, it wasn't Wave who killed them, from what I was able to find out from reliable sources, it was a single man that had killed them, both master and apprentice stared at the toad Sanin with wide eyes and actually have to study him for any deceit since what they heard was just too unbelievable to process. You can't be serious, said Tsunade, but Jiraiya grimly nods his head in confirmation. Sadly, I am, my spy in wave told me about how the village had been under our control, but then a single man came out of nowhere and decimated our forces single-handedly, he left no survivors and did a god job at making sure of that, however, what gets me worried is the description of the man himself he said, getting a raised eyebrow from Tsunade. Wait a minute, our forces were wiped out by a single man, and we just tried to conquer a neutral country, the doing of which meant the difference of surviving or dying in this upcoming war and that's what you're worried about. Asked Tsunade while trying her best to keep her rage in, news had probably spread to the other villages about Leaf's attempt on wave and they are all most likely preparing to retaliate even more now than ever. You'd be interested if you knew that the one who did this is not from Wave Country. Tsunade and her assistant lose their train of thought after hearing that piece of information, a human with that type of power is just wandering the elemental countries. That's not a happy thought, he must be a mercenary if what I am being told is true, and we need to find this man so he could help us in this upcoming war, thought Tsunade. Did you get a description of the man? Asked the slug Sanin with a hint of hope, if she can find whoever that person is and capture him either through force or paying him the proper fee it would make things so much easier, hell, they might even be able to tempt this man to start a clan with that type of power here in their village. Sorry, but I didn't get a description, but I do know that they are male, my spy was in a rush to send me the message since the writing was squiggly at best, my contact has gotten silent since then so he's either lying low or. He was killed off, finished Tsunade who folds her fingers together and leans her chin on them. Lady Tsunade, you must bring this up to the council, they must know of the development of the attack force as well as this man who is out there with the power to decimate our forces so easily, said Shizun. As much as she wants to say no, Tsunade can't deny the fact that the council needs to know, this sort of thing is too big for her to simply brush under the rug. You do know that they'll want to send off more people to wave in order to retake it, told Jiraiya, knowing full well what the elders will want to do. We won't try anything as of now. We've lost enough ninjas so far and I don't want to see any more casualties so soon since we will need everyone that we can get to survive this war. While we may not have the numbers for defense alone against two villages, we still have some of the brightest strategists in the world so we can still survive if we plan this out just right. You should also know that Iron Country Samurai have been hired to guard Wave Country with Mifune himself leading them. And why are they doing that? Asked Tsunade in shock, they are usually neutral in these conflicts, so why are they there? Mostly because we tried to invade a neutral country so they have taken upon themselves to protect a neutral country like themselves. Lady Tsunade! Shouted a shinobi that had stormed into the room. What is it? Said Tsunade angrily since he had just stormed into her office unannounced. Katetsu is back in the village and is in need of immediate medical aid. What? Shouted Tsunade as she stood up, we need to get him to the hospital immediately. They all left the office in a rush since Katetsu could tell them who the man was that had killed off their forces. They arrived on the scene shortly afterwards, and what they saw horrified them, Kotesu was there on the ground, crawling towards the Hokage Tower, but once she was in his sights, he turned towards her instead and began to crawl toward her, during the long slow walk back towards the village, he had lost an arm as well as a leg to wolves, yet even though he lost so much blood from it, his body continued to move forward since those were his orders from Naruto. Kotetsu, asked Tsunade as she used medical chakra into her hands and used them to heal what she could at the moment to prep him for the surgery that he would definitely need, what happened to you? Kotetsu gargled something that was incomprehensible, so Tsunade leaned in more to see if she could make out what he said, he repeated what he had gargled the first time, and once he was done saying it, his head exploded, covering her whole upper body with blood and brain matter, Tsunade stood up and from the look of shock on her face, those around her didn't know if it was from what was said to her or the fact that she was just next to a head that had literally exploded in her face. Tsunade, asked Shizun with concern, are you okay? What did he say to you? He told me, stuttered Tsunade, that Naruto is still alive. The silence that followed lasted for quite a bit after she had said that. Iwa, 
Naruto had walked to Iwa to handle a problem before it got out of hand later on in the future. He had walked there from Wave Country at a fast yet steady rate since he was in a hurry. But not that great of one, as he appeared close to the front gates that led into the village. He was stopped by several Iwa shinobi that were on guard, Naruto couldn't help but smirk as he saw this since for most of his shinobi career he had always been told that Iwa was the type of village that preferred quantity over quality, and the fact that they had so many shinobi on guard duty at the front gate only solidified that, but then again, they were setting up for war so maybe he was just overthinking it. You there, said a jonin with an eye patch over his left eye, state your business here. I am here to speak to the Suchikage, said Naruto, and if you do not go and get him within the next few seconds I will go through you to meet him. You dare threaten us, said another jonin, do you have any idea of who we are? So I take that as a no on the fetching of your cage, am I right to assume this? You're damn right that we want fetch him, Naruto just sighed as he stood there for a brief second before he appeared behind them still looking at the large doors that were closed that prevented him from entering. The several shinobi then flew backwards themselves and all hit the doors with enough force to not only knock them unconscious but to blast the doors off their hinges as well, Naruto was about to take a step into the village when he stopped mid-step, he smiled as the shadow clone had puffed out and the memories of what it had done came to him, he quickly made another one who then used the Hiroshin to teleport back towards Wave. Wave. While the real Naruto had gone to do what needed to be done at Iwa. The clone had gone back into town and began to clean up the mess that he had made when he fought the Leaf Shinobi. He burned the corpses and destroyed the podium that was to be used as an execution ground since it was not needed anymore nor would it ever since the people here were peaceful. He stopped a spy of Jiraiya's from giving a complete report of what had happened here and saw that the message had said that a strange man had killed off their forces by himself but didn't have a clue as to his identity, he knew that this would help spread panic to the leaf so he sent it through the proper channels with Kyubi's help by having the message secretly delivered to another of Jiraiya's spies who would then give it to Jiraiya himself. Once everything was cleared out, the people of the village had decided to come out and celebrate the return of their hero who had saved them for a second time. And all the while Naruto couldn't help but notice Tsunami's quick lustful gazes as well as hear her whispering if only I was younger. Naruto told the people that even though he stopped the invasion force this time. That unless they get a proper group to defend them. That Konoha would just send more out to attack and try to do what the first invasion force failed to do. So Tazuna had a friend of his send word to Mifune in Iron Country to call in a favor that he owned Tazuna since they were old drinking buddies to aid them long enough to not be attacked again until the war between the three villages was over, Mifune came within the next few days along with a large group of samurai to protect the people, all the while the people celebrated the entire week away. Within the week, Naruto had met with a drunken tsunami since she was celebrating with her father by drinking with him since it was a special occasion. She had gone up to him and just grabbed his head and kissed him. But then suddenly stopped and cried since she claimed that she loved him but the differences in their ages would make it impossible for them since they wouldn't be able to escape the judgment of other people. Naruto told her that he had a way to reverse her age. To which she jumped in joy about, but he warned her it would be quite painful to do, she basically demanded that he do it anyway, to which he just assumed that it was the booze making her act this way, but the conviction was real enough, so he poked all her pressure points at once which caused her body to stiffen in pain, he then grabbed her head and channeled chakra through her system doing so caused her body's age to regress until she had the body she had when she was 21. Once the process was done, she leapt on him and basically mouth raped him with her tongue. Tazuna and Inari covered their eyes and looked away from this since neither one of them wanted to see her like this since for Inari that was his mother and no child should ever see their mother act like that. Tazuna was conflicted about it since that was his daughter and like most fathers he was concerned about her well-being. But here was the man who had saved them not once but twice in his life so having such a son-in-law appealed to him. So he jokingly told them that they should get hitched. To which Naruto surprised him by saying he would if she wanted to. She of course wanted to, but she was warned that as the last of his clan that he would most likely have multiple women in his life. To which she just kissed him more and told him that as long as he loved her that it would be okay. And Inari wasn't against it since he would now have a father figure again in his life. So once the news of the proposal became known to the people. There was even more celebration than before, the two of them were married by Mifune himself. And the people all came together to build them a home of their own. Which with their combined effort only took three days even though they built a house twice as big as any of the others in town. Once the house was built, the two of them entered it and Naruto placed sound suppression seals all over since what they had planned would get loud, so after all the prep work was done, they went at it like animals with the clone ripping off her clothes and thrusting into her like a madman, over the course of the next several days they screwed in every room of the house before the shadow clone was finally spent and poofed away. 
The newly created clone of Naruto appeared in Tsunami's bedroom in a flash of yellow and smirked when he saw a comb-coated Tsunami kneeling on the bed. With both hands pushing her big tits toward her face and licking the sperm the previous Naruto clone had shot on them. His cock got hard instantly and twitched madly in his pants at the sight of the slutty woman. Wearing her wedding dress, but it had been modified to look extremely erotic, it was made of silk and flowery laces, the necklines of her dress dipped to below her breasts, completely exposing her incredible firm bosom and stiff nipples, the trailing white skirts were nigh translucent, and there were vertical slits up the front and back, revealing her pussy and asked for him to drink in with his eyes. He knew why his fellow clone didn't bother to get her naked, because the dress was simply a massive turn-on for him. Thank the gods for gifting me such a beautiful woman in this world to be my wife, the Naruto clone said stupidly, gaining the attention of the black-haired woman. A seductive smile appeared on her face when she saw him and she then raised her hand to make the come over gesture with her index finger, saying. Come here, honey, she said sultrily come and fuck your bride. Damn right, I am coming. The clone said excitedly and hurriedly removed his clothes, throwing his jacket and pants away to stand completely naked in the room, with his cock hard and standing tall in front of him as he prepared to fuck his wife. He then jumped on the bed and kneeled down in front of Tsunami. Smashing his lips against hers and inserted his tongue into her mouth, one hand groping her tit and the other furiously fingering her pussy, getting the comb of the latest clone out to make room for him, Tsunami was pushed down to the bed in the same position and happily returned the favor by kissing him back and stroked the underside of his cock, as well as fondling his massive family jewels. His muscular body easily pinched her down and kept her in the place he wanted. Naruto mentally smirked when he felt his cock meet her pussy lips and thrust his hip forward just a little to insert the head of his cock into her tight fold. Even after being fucked by his clone before him for days, Tsunami was still craving for more and her pussy was still as tight as ever for him, a unique trait that was hard to find in human women nowadays. Naruto only waited until Tsunami finally wrapped her legs around his waist to thrust his cock into her abused pussy. Going ball deep in one single thrust and moaned out at her tight tunnel clenched tightly around his cock, all Tsunami could do was moan, as the 13 inches piece of meat once again stretched her to the limit and filled her full like never before. He then pulled his hips back before slamming forward into the now moaning woman, setting an immediate and brutal pace as he started fucking her. For the next 10 minutes, Tsunami could only moan as her body had experienced so many orgasms Shed was fairly certain Shed lost the ability to count. Much less keep track of the amount rapidly adding up, he was fucking her so good the speed was so intense and almost inhuman, just like how his other clone had fucked her and played with her, each time they went at it, the clone would come at least four times before she passed out so she would always make sure the clone cream pied her inside through all her three holes and on her tits as well before he was forced to stop since she passed out. Coming. The Naruto clone cried out and slammed his hip down as hard as he could, groaning out in pleasure as he exploded into her, but instead of stopping and enjoying the feeling, he raised his hip and started to fuck her while coming like a broken hose into her again, making Tsunami scream out as she rapidly came around his cock. Walking into the village of Iwa and away from the front gate that had been blasted open, a large metal construct protecting the hidden stone village, Naruto was stopped by two more gate guards. Halt! One called out, frowning as he took in Naruto's hair and eyes, state your name and purpose in this village. Namikaze Naruto here to see the Suchikage, he answered, using a name they would definitely recognize since it belonged to their sworn enemy. En Namikaze? As in Namikaze Minato, the yellow flash? One guard asked, paling to a shade normally reserved for a certain snake sonin that hid away in rice country? Naruto frowned, hating his relation to the man but requiring the reputation it garnered, especially in Iwa, yes, he was my father. During the training expedition in the western wastelands. A couple of years into it to be precise, Naruto was by himself as Kanshiro went to meet an old college. During that time he trained in the arts of his clan as well as his father. In the middle of the session he felt vast pain that forced both the spirits of his parents out of his body like it had done to the Kayubi himself. His mother had been ecstatic about the fact that they were alive again and had hugged her son who she loved with all her heart. Minato smiled as he looked around and saw that they were not in the elemental countries. He asked where they were and what had happened to Konoha, but it was at that point that Naruto growled as he went on to explain what his life had been like up to that point and his plans for the future. His mother had been very supportive of his life choices. Yet his father had gotten angry at him for them. He demanded that Naruto return home and begs for his old shinobi position and to protect the village as he had before him. Minato was too loyal to Konoha and even in death that loyalty was stronger than anything else. Yet Naruto told him that Konoha could burn in hell for all he cared. Minato then quickly prepared a seal to help remold Naruto's mind. But Kashina saw this and confronted him on it, Minato told her to get out of the way. 
but she refused, to which he then shoved the Rasengan into her chest and said that Naruto was a weapon that must protect his home no matter what the scenario. Minto then tried to use the seal he had prepared to use on Naruto, but was stopped when Kashina used her chakra chains to hold him in place. This gave Naruto ample time to break his arms so that he wouldn't be able to use jutsu of any sort. He went on to explain that the Namikaze name would become forgotten to time and that his children will never know who Minato was. And in a few generations he would become forgotten entirely, Minato scowled as he said this, but Naruto just tapped his forehead with a finger and walked past him towards his mother's dying body. Minato exploded behind him and yet he didn't even look back as he did. Naruto held his mother's body as she voiced her last words that were of love towards him and encouragement to live his life as he wished. Die Namikaze! One of the guards yelled, both rushing him at the same time. Sighing in annoyance, Naruto vanished and reappeared between the two, his hands whipping out and swatting them away, in a speeding blur. The two Iwanin were sent crashing into the village walls, cracking the stone and losing consciousness. Naruto could have easily killed them, but that was not what he wanted to do right now. Come, first with those weaklings that invaded Wave and now these two, I really need to limit my strength further, Naruto mused, staring down at his hands, unlike the wastelands with all the bandits and wannabe rulers out there, the people here are just so fragile. I can't expect them to survive hits that would have been shrugged off by the bandits. Keeping that thought at the back of his mind and returning to his current situation, Naruto turned his attention to the giant gate that stood before him, his thoughts taking a more devious and fun garnering turn. I might as well bring the cage to me rather than going to him, it will likely save more time since I would have to fight nearly every shinobi of Iwa just to get to him and make it easier to convince him. His thoughts decided, Naruto raised an arm and extended a finger channeling and focusing his chakra at the fingertip, pouring a great amount of dark blue power into the technique. He manipulated it into a ball roughly the size of his head, one that was slowly growing in size as time passed. Once the ball was roughly doubled in size, Naruto flicked his finger, launching the technique at the city gates. He had taken the teachings of his mentor and used it to make a far more powerful form of his ranged energy attack. He used the Rasengan as a conduit of sorts and pushed vast amounts of chakra into a projectile that could be as big or as small as he wanted. In a blur of blue light, the ball of energy struck the gate and slowly began to sink into the metal, melting the nearby material into a thick, gooey sludge made up of melted metal. Once half the ball had sunk into the gate, Naruto launched another small blast of energy at it, causing an immediate and terrifying chain reaction. The ball exploded with the force of a thousand explosive tags, sending massive shock waves throughout the village and knocking over many people close to the gate. Less than 10 seconds after the explosion happened, the Suchikage himself appeared on a nearby rooftop along with a contingent of Jonin, Chunin and Jenin appearing around him an instant later. As the dust cleared, they were met with quite the terrifying sight. The massive gates that had protected the village for decades had been completely destroyed. A massive and spacious remaining in their place, standing on the other end of the crater was a man. A man that happened to look like a warrior that Onoki himself had fought in his youth, and the memory of that day has forever haunted him. It was one of the reasons that when Minato had attacked during the Third Shinobi War that he surrendered since he feared that Minato had been trained by that man, even if it was only slightly, the kind of power he had seen that man use was not human in any possible way. Who are you? What do you want? The Suchikage shouted, his face calm but his eyes burning with rage yet it was outlined with apparent fear since he was afraid that the monster of a man from his past had not only trained a student but sent that student to finish off what he had started long ago. He was a very short old man, with a big red nose, triangular beard and angular mustache, despite his comical appearance. Onoki was an extremely powerful shinobi, one that had gained the title of Onoki of both scales and was regarded as one of the three pillars of the shinobi world due to his great power, a title shared by only he, Sarutobi Hiruzen and Salamander Hanzo. My name is Namikaze Naruto, son of Namikaze Minato, Naruto called back, suppressing his flinch at the claim. His reply seemed to cause a great amount of unease among the Iwa Nin. Many of them gasping and slipping into their fighting stances, their combined killing intent being brushed off by the blonde. Onoki on the other hand seemed to actually calm down at that, his rage vanishing and his eyes focusing, the man either prepared to speak or battle, he saw that even though this young Namikaze had attacked his men, they were clearly still alive since they were in one piece as well as the fact they were still moving. I am here to talk about an alliance, Naruto added causing some of those who heard him to blink and growl at his words. Why would we want to ally with Konoha? Onoki called back, eyes narrowed in thought, not to mention the fact that not only have you destroyed our gate which has withstood the test of time since the founding of our village, you are also the son of our most hated enemy, Minato Namikaze. In the blink of an eye, 
The blonde vanished from his spot several dozen meters away and appeared a mere ten feet from the large group of shinobi. Surprising and terrifying many with his impressive speed, luckily for many Iwanin, a signal from their cage put a stop to their preemptive strike, saving them from the blonde's retaliatory carnage. Onoki was many things in life, but a fool was not one of them, fighting this man would cost too many good men and they needed those men to aid their ally Kumo in the upcoming war. Ah yes, the gate, well, that was mostly to gain your attention, since it was either that or having to fight my way to your office, and this just seemed so much simpler to do in the long run, Naruto replied sheepishly, his grin causing many of the gathered shinobi to growl angrily, it was much like that of his father, also, your guards felt the need to attack me when they learned my identity so I felt that destroying your gate would more than make up for it. That actually drew a small smirk from the elderly cage, the mon's eyes glazing momentarily as he visited a past memory. You also seem to have misunderstood me, Naruto continued, drawing the cage from his thoughts, I am not a Konoha nin, in fact, I actually plan to watch Konoha burn into nothing but ashes, I have come here to ask that you ally with me since I have a plan that will aid you immensely with this war you have with them. This caused a great many to blink and gape in surprise, completely blindsided that the son of the most powerful Hokage sought the destruction of his own village, a village both his parents died to protect. Why would you seek to see father's village destroyed? Onoki asked, highly curious of the blonde's reasoning, and if, if, you were able to somehow succeed in this plan of yours, why should we ally with you and not just kill you to end the bloodline of our sworn enemy? My fathers, the word was spat out with such venom and malice that a few of the Iwa Nin actually recoiled away from the blonde, village, as you say, has made me its enemy for reasons I choose not to share and when I finally put my plan into action, you will see that I make a far better ally than enemy, my master told me about how you fought him long ago, and I was wondering how your back was doing. Onoki narrowed his eyes at the unspoken threat, seeing the blonde in a slightly new light, very well Namikaze, should you actually succeed in this plan of yours, what exactly is it that you want out of all this? Many of the gathered nin began to protest at this point but a pointed look from their cage, as well as a killing intent laced chakra spike, was enough to silence them. A wise decision to hear me out, Naruto replied, his hand slipping into one of his pockets and causing the various nin to stiffen. All I want in return is for you to end this feud with my family in the future. Let your hatred for the Namikaze name die with my father. For I renounce it after today and will not use it as my own ever again. I am an Uzumaki who wants to live my own life with a family of my own in the future without the fear that Iwa will try to kill them just because I am of that mon's bloodline. And as long as your village does not harm my family, then they will have nothing to fear since I personally have nothing against you since I am a shinobi no more and do not care for shinobi matters. The second and last thing I wish is when all is said and done. Once fire country is conquered, I want to personally remove the head of the fire daimyo myself. I would also like to offer this as an apology for your gate as well as proof of my commitment to our future alliance. With that he slowly withdrew his hand, causing the shinobi to relax as he was holding a simple sealing scroll, a scroll that was soon tossed to the elderly cage, Onoki simply eyed the scroll warily before handing it to one of his janin, standard procedure when dealing with neutral and enemy shinobi, who opened it and read. A few seconds passed before the mon's eyes widened his jaw dropping as he stared at the scroll. It it it's, he stuttered, unable to complete his sentence due to his immense shock. Get on with it man, Onoki snapped highly annoyed at the mon's suspense building behavior. It's the instructions to the Rasengan, as well as the Yandaimi's speed training routine Suchikage-sama. The man shouted, causing all those who heard him to copy his earlier expression. Snatching the scroll away, Onoki stared at it for a few seconds as his men celebrated behind him before turning his attention to the blonde, a wide smile stretching across his face. I look forward to our future alliance Namikaze San Onoki spoke, holding a hand out to the blonde. Naruto immediately took the mon's hand, his grin widening as he shook hands with the powerful cage. Please, call me Naruto, he said as he patted the elderly cage on the back, now before I tell you my plan to aid you in this war, do you have any beer? I could kill someone for a drink right now. One week later, Naruto spent a good week in Iwa going over his plans for Konoha with Onoki and the village council. Taking time to also give pointers to the many who attempted to learn the Rasengan. Which accounted for over 80% of the active shinobi roster. By the end of the week, most Iwa Nin were on the second step of learning the technique but it was a slow progress since most of them found it difficult to complete the first stage alone. Naruto was quick to calm them however, as Jiraiya had taken three months to master the technique and the Iwa Nin were lacking the bonus of a Shadow Clone's assistance, they were well aware that it would take them quite some time to fully master the Rasengan. In the end it was decided by the Suchikage and the council that they would gladly ally with the blonde and help with his plan, 
One of their stipulations however was that the alliance would only come into effect once Naruto had completed his portion of it, in exchange they would grant him sanctuary should he ever require it. In order to keep the alliance a secret and prevent Konoha from learning about their shared plan for the future, it was decided that Naruto would be put in Iwa's bingo book, marked as a criminal and enemy of the state. He also helped keep the alliance a secret by aiding them in wiping out all spies that Jiraiya had within the village, on Naruto's suggestion, as he was getting incredibly bored with politics, he was set up to fight a battalion of Iwa Nin in order to decide his rank. Quite the challenge as the last man to take on a battalion of Iwa's best had been the Yandaimi Hokage himself, this battle would allow Naruto to show off his power, as well as prove once and for all that he had the strength required to do his portion of the plan against Konoha. The battle was quick and gruesome, the blonde blazing through his opponents and disabling them with his techniques. It took him less than two minutes to slaughter them all, 500 of I was best, including Onoki of both scales himself, all beat down and killed in a matter of minutes, the blonde definitely lived up to his heritage and bold claims, in the end, he was marked in sulfur monosulfide rank threat with a simple flea on sight order, the second to receive such a ranking in all of Iwa's history, the first being his father. With that display, the citizens of Iwa couldn't help but believe in the blonde's chances, he could actually succeed in helping them bring down Konoha. This had of course led to much partying and drinking. The next day, the bingo books were sent out and Naruto left Iwa, highly pleased with what he had accomplished. Three days later, Konoha, for close to two weeks after a certain blonde's sudden reappearance according to the only surviving member of the wave invasion force. Tsunade had spent much of her time arguing with the village council and elders. Said blonde being the topic of their many conversations. It was only the revelation of Naruto's heritage that prevented the updating of his bingo book entry in the release of the hunter Nin since they couldn't spare any Nin if they were to survive the coming war. Ending the argument with Tsunade's victory, much to the chagrin of many council members since they wanted him found and enslaved to serve and protect Konoha, however, this was the safest option to take, as far as the council was concerned, they couldn't place the son of their beloved Yandaimi in the bingo books, what would he would do with such information? They were also unable to send hunter Nin after him, because like Tsunade mentioned they were too short-handed to do that, the enemy would probably kill those hunter Nin if they were given the chance since dead Konoha Shinobi only meant that Konoha was weaker in the long run. In the end, they had decided to place his entry in the book as an A rank threat to be captured on sight. It was their hope that someone would be able to defeat and return the wayward Namikaze, if it was done then they could use him to get their alliances back and be better prepared for the war and they believed that anyone who went after him would have no problem capturing him since he had been weak when he was supposedly killed, and in their minds he had hidden away for seven years by hiding his chakra and wouldn't have trained in any way in his pursuit to stay hidden. This belief of theirs was dashed away only a matter of days later. Tsunade found herself repeating the same actions Shed performed for the last few days, namely holing up in her office and drinking sake, her thoughts revolving around Naruto and her plans to gain control of him once more so as to gain their alliance back. It was at this time that Shizune barged in, the younger woman looking terribly flustered and shocked. Tsunade sama, you have to see this, Shizune yelled, waving some book around. Go away, Shizune, I am not in the mood for more paperwork, Tsunade replied, her head dropping to the desk with a tired groan. She hadn't been sleeping well for the past few months since the fear of attack was always on her mind. It's about Naruto, Shizune continued undeterred, he's in Iowa's bingo book. What? Let me see. Tsunade shouted, leaping to her feet and snatching the book from her assistant, quickly flipping to the back pages. It's on page 3, Shizune pointed out, greatly shocking Tsunade, since only the highest ranked threats were placed at the front of the bingo books and seeing as pages 1 and 2 were simple introductory paragraphs. Flipping to the page, she was shocked to see that it was indeed an entry for Naruto, an image of the boy posted in the top left corner looking nothing like he did year ago, he was short haired as well as far more muscular than when he left the village. The entry below the picture did not serve to calm her racing heart. Name. Namikaze Naruto, so they know his real name, Tsunade blanched, horrified that the information had gone out despite all of her attempts to keep it under wraps, now the whole world knows of your heritage Naruto, we will look like even bigger fools to the rest of the world for trying to kill off Minato's son. Rank. SS, that caused her eyes to widen to new lengths, that can't just be because of his father's identity. Onoki is far too smart and sly to hold such a grudge and place him in the book on that knowledge alone, what have you done Naruto? Description. Age. Roughly 20 to 21 years of age. Height. Between 6 foot 6 inches and 6 foot 8 inches. Appearance. Short, blonde hair, sapphire blue eyes, usually adorned in a dark blue jacket, wields immense taijutsu abilities that are unmatched by anyone. Last affiliated village. The village hidden in the leaves. Rank before leaving village. Genin, 
Reason for entry. Charged with the destruction of the village gate, charged with the slaughter of 500 Iwa Nin of Chunin and above rank, charged with the assault and attempted murder on Onoki of both scales, Sandame Suchikage. He did what? Tsunade raged, eyes widening as she read the entry. This made her feel mixed emotions since on the one hand he had unknowingly helped Konoha by killing off so many Iwa shinobi so they would need time to recover their numbers and might even call off the war entirely since with that many shinobi gone they wouldn't be able to aid Kumo as much as they would like. On the other hand she was pissed since Naruto was never meant to have this type of power to wield and once he was captured his mind would be erased so they could start from scratch and re-educate him into being the mindless weapon that they demanded of him but not before documenting everything he knew so that they could strengthen themselves as well as find where he hid the funds he stole from the village when he left, how strong are you Naruto? To not only defeat a battalion of Iwa Nin, but to fight and survive a battle with Onoki, this is no mere feat. Known abilities. Extraordinary speed and strength, capable of an unknown speed technique on par with the Yandaimi Hokage's flying thunder god and the Yandaimi Reikage's lightning armor, this unknown technique is unrecognizable, inhuman taijutsu abilities, expert user of shadow clones, capable of many powerful and seal less jutsu recommended course of action flee on sight do not engage target if you value your life below that was a chart showing an estimation of the blonde's abilities the genjutsu portion had a question mark while the taijutsu kenjutsu and ninjutsu portions were off the charts this was truly in sulfur monosulfide rank shinobi tsunade read and reread the entry many times before she turned to her desk activating a seal and summoning one of jiraiya's toads the creature simply staring at her as it awaited its orders. Find Jiraiya, tell him to drop everything and find Naruto, I want him found and brought here to protect this village from Iwa. Tsunade ordered receiving a salute from the toad before it disappeared in a puff of smoke. Turning to Shizune, Tsunade made a choice, she would have to update their bingo books as well, otherwise, Konoha would be made to look like a fool due to their lack of information. Update our bingo books with the information supplied in here. Add in anything we may know that they don't and move him up to S rank with a capture only reward, we need the brat here alive. Hi Tsunade sama, Shizune replied, running off to complete her orders. With that finished, Tsunade sank back into her desk and poured another glass of sake. Her thoughts continuing their revolution around a certain blonde brat that she had come to hate over the years. Her hatred for the brat only grew once she sent a report to the fire daimyo who then ordered her to find him and to not only that but to offer him anything that he desired to stay in the village. Even the seed of Hokage if he so wished, and once the war was over and their alliances were back on track, she was to then find means to control him to be a puppet leader so that way their allies wouldn't leave them for the second time. Tsunade was loath to let the brat sit in that seat of power for even one second, but her orders were clear and she could only find quiet resolution in knowing that he would suffer in the long run since he would be controlled like the tool he was in the end. Near Suna, Naruto looked at the vast desert of wind country with his hood up and his bandana over his face to block the sands from hitting his eyes. As he felt it was the opposite of the western wastelands in many aspects. And yet the same in others, the cruel winds, sand everywhere. And the many different creatures including humans that had long since learned to survive the harsh environmental hazards it held for many years. The Hokuto user didn't care for it though, as he had no interest in any of these things. Since he was on his way to see his friend and time was of the essence since he wanted to go home for a bit and spend time with his wife instead of having to send a shadow clone and being bombarded by the memories when she drained them dry, he didn't understand how she was able to hold out for so long, but he was guessing that she was holding in and repressing her sexual urges like a floodgate that he had just blasted open and she acted on impulse, not that he was complaining in any way. And now here he was, just a few hundred feet away from Suna. And already there was a smell in the air of humans being that he had come to familiarize himself with since it was a smell he had come smell quite often in the wastelands. It was the smell of an attack on a village since there was the distinct smell of smoke on the horizon that was far too strong to be just a simple fire of some sort. As he knew Gara would never let anyone boss burn the village down and or sink the village in any way since if they tried the sand here was perfect for Gara to use to aid his village, of that, Naruto remembered that much about the one-tailed Jinchuriki and knew if there was one place he should go to see a long-lost friend it was Suna. So why did he get this feeling something bad had just happened to Gara? His gut feeling had never let him down before, so he began to worry a bit for his friend's safety. Speeding up once again to further decrease the gap between himself to Suna. He found that the village had just recently been attacked. As indicated by the tall tale signs of smoke seen from several places, and stopped when he was soon surrounded by Suna Shinobi, each of them armed looking at him suspiciously knowing he could be an enemy sent to attack them while they were weakened by their recent attack, as they had never seen someone like him before in terms of his choice of clothing, complexion, 
and overall muscly form, other than the rakage himself but this man was obviously not him. Identify yourself, said Asuna Shinobi to Naruto's right. I am here to see Sabaku no Gara. judging by the smoke behind your walls when I was traveling here, I came at a bad time, said Naruto before he looked behind the Suna Shinobi in front of him to see Hitaki Kakashi, Uchiha Sasuke, Haruno Sakura, and some pale-skinned boy that could almost rival the Orochimaru himself if they were stand next to each other. With the exception of the fake smile of course, who are you? said Sakura, as she saw this large stranger just stare at her with his covered face, and saw Sasuke out of the corner of her eyes narrow them at the man since his face looked familiar to him in some way that he was unsure of and he felt enraged about it for some reason. My name is not really important right now, I came to this village to speak to Sabaku Nogara, what has happened here? asked Naruto, as he kept the tugging feeling in the back of his mind to obliterate the four-leaf shinobi from existence, and make himself a target before his plan was put into action. The case cage has been kidnapped by the Akatsuki, we're here to help save Gara at the request of his siblings since they need superior shinobi to do what they clearly can't do themselves, said Sasuke with a smirk in hopes of impressing this man before them and to make himself known to foreigners entering Suna, if his name becomes famous enough then people would flood to their village in droves and help the village survive to see him, or at least how it played out in his mind. So Gara is the case cage now, huh? I must congratulate my old friend when I save him myself said Naruto to himself before turning around having already sensed where the Akatsuki members had taken Gara in the distance. Wait, you said you were friends with him? Since when? said Tamari having walked in on their conversation. Gara had only ever been friends with one person, and the last time she checked Naruto was dead, or at least he was according to the rumors for the past several years. Some time ago, it's been a while and I am sure he doesn't recognize me, however, I know after we talk, hell recall who I am and embrace me in friendship as I did so long ago with him, said Naruto and began walking away with his hands in his pockets like he always did before vanishing from sight in the western wastelands, like some kind of ghost or spirit that became a legend like his mentor had before him. What kind of jutsu was that? said Sakura while looking at Kakashi and saw he was also confused since he had never seen anything like it either. He also mentally cursed himself for not trying to copy it with his eyes so that it could be taught to Sasuke when he had the time to do so. But he didn't really plan on it since they had been sent on this mission to try and help Gara. The mission had multiple outcomes to it, with either Gara being so thankful that they had aided him in his survival to the point that they would aid them in the coming war. Or else they would eliminate him and subdue the Biju so as to seal it within Sasuke and add to his already impressive strength. They had another shinobi named Yamato with the abilities to suppress the beast already heading out towards the Akatsuki's hideout already, after he had heard that Naruto was still alive and had done what he did to Iwa he had devoted himself to his senjutsu training and mastered it shortly afterwards, now he was ready to fight Naruto and defeat him, settling the score between them once and for all. Well find out more about him later, come on you three, we need to track down the two Akatsuki members and save Gara before that new guy does, said Kakashi, as he felt a cold shivering sensation crawl up his spine, and the Junin felt like he had just missed something important. Wave. Naruto and Tsunami were walking back to the house after they had acquired everything that Tsunami needed to cook for today, the blonde had a smile on his face and Tsunami sported one on her mature face as they walked past the many other houses and people that lived in Wave Country, Tsunami had told Naruto everything that happened since his rumored death as they walked through the town towards their house. Tsunami got to the door itself before she gave him a lustful look, thanks for helping me with the groceries, I wonder how I am going to repay you, she said as she locked eyes with him, Naruto knew exactly where she was going with this. Naruto looked at her up and down before leering at her, I can think of a few ways, he said with a suggestive wiggle of his eyebrows. Tsunami blushed before she matched his look with a saucy smirk on her face, she stepped in front of him and she gave him a show as she swayed her hips, her plump and round ass jiggling as she walked in front of him, Naruto made sure to keep his eyes glued to it the rest of the trek into their shared house. When they arrived, they noticed that Inari wasn't home yet since somehow he had a sixth sense about this and knew when to stay away from the house and that only served to bubble up their excitement since they didn't have to worry about him being scared, Tsunami moved towards the kitchen so she could sort out everything she had bought and Naruto took a seat at the table so he could watch her move around. He watched with a smirk on his face as she made a show of arranging all the groceries they had bought in town, she would make exaggerated movements to accentuate her well-developed and big assets, she would also look back at Naruto to glance at him a smirk on her face and eyes inviting as she kept arranging the stuff, much to his enjoyment. Naruto looked down to see that he had a bulge in his pants before he looked up to see that Tsunami had put away the last item and she was bending over the kitchen counter, looking back at him with inviting eyes as she jiggled her ass at him and swayed her hip enticingly, 
Come over him please, she said to him as she motioned towards her with her index finger and a lick of her lips. Naruto grinned as he stood up and walked towards her. He approached her and grabbed her hips as he pressed his crotch against her ass. She began to grind her ass into his covered erection and Naruto began to shove his dick into her motions, making her moan lowly, is this your way of thanking me? He asked her with no amused tone of voice. Tsunami shrugged her shoulders as she began to put more force into her motions, partly, I also haven't had a good fuck since this morning, so can you help a girl out, she pleaded with a lustful moan. Sure, why not, agreed Naruto with a shrug of his own shoulders before he began to grope Tsunami's plump ass and spanked it, much to her approval as she began to moan loudly and work her hips with more enthusiasm and force, his fingers sunk into the covered flesh as they grinded into each other. Tsunami closed her eyes as she arched her back, her hands gripping the edge of the counter as she could feel the shape of Naruto's erect cock against her covered pussy lips. She could feel her panties dampening as she continued to shove her ass into Naruto's pelvis in a very sensual fashion. Those past dancing lessons really were paying off right now as she began to swirl her hips, Naruto smacked both of her ass cheeks, the flesh jiggling and she moaned heavily as he began to make thrusting motions and Tsunami began to shove back forcefully, this continued for a few minutes before he decided that he wanted to move on. He was horny as fuck right now with this MILF doing the things she was doing and he just wanted to get a piece of his wife while he was like this. He pulled back a little and she looked back at him with some confusion before he grasped her hand directed it towards his crotch, she gave him an understanding look before she smirked as she began to rub up and down his length, she moaned as just how long and thick it felt, she couldn't wait to have that godly cock inside of her churning up her insides and making her his all over again. Naruto meanwhile ripped off her skirt and shirt getting a squeal from her. He inspected her creamy skin that had no blemishes on it other than the angry red color that her ass cheeks already sported due to how much he had spanked her, he unclipped her bra and he licked his lips as he discarded them, watching her big breasts were freed, his right hand began to play with her right tit and his left hand snaked around her wide hip and reached into her crotch and he began to rub her clothed pussy, his eyes widened in amusement. Someone is already wet, he remarked with an amused voice as he began to work on her mound. Tsunami moaned with delight as she felt him playing with two of her most sensitive places, I am wet because of you, Naruto, she said before she decided that she wanted to feel his dick directly, with dexterous fingers, she freed it from its confinements and her eyes widened when she beheld the pinnacle of manhood that Naruto was proud to call his own, it bulged like the muscles on the rest of his body. Tsunami jacked him off rhythmically as she paid special attention to his bulbous head and long shaft tenderly palming him as she moaned with delight at the thought of this humongous cock eventually going inside of her with the purpose of ruining her from the inside so that only he would be able to satisfy her from then on, not that she was going to complain mind you. And they would proceed to screw each other's brains out for the rest of the night, their dinner plans becoming forgotten in the heat of their passionate moment. Naruto walked towards his destination at a hastened pace since he felt his friend Gara's energy begin to fade somehow, he wasn't sure why it was dwindling as it was, but he was going to find out soon enough. He walked out of the deserts of wind country and eventually made it to another area full of trees and canyons, as he walked he was met with no form of resistance, but that luck of his ended quite suddenly when he finally met that resistance that he was expecting. And it came in the form of Itachi and Kisame, the Akatsuki pair that were meant to deal with and subdue him. Not that Naruto would let them stop him from reaching his goals. So if it isn't Sushi Bitch and the Silent Asshole, killed any other clans lately? Have you spilled the blood of innocent puppies? asked Naruto in a mocking tone as he cracked his knuckles, he had remembered reading about the two of them in the bingo book in his spare time since he knew that he would most likely face some of the tougher nin that were in it since strong people usually tried to kill other strong people to verify their existence, so he knew who these two people were and was prepared to face them. Look at him Itachi, seven years away with him being declared legally dead and the brat thinks he is hot shit, remarked Kisame with a smirk while Itachi said nothing as he observed Naruto. Seven years away from that village did wonders for my being, I set out west and learned to survive the worst that life can throw at you and I am happy that I did, said Naruto while Kisame kept on grinning while Itachi's eyes narrowed slightly. So you spend your time alone getting stronger, big fucking deal, it still won't help you against us, said Kisame while Naruto grinned as he heard this since it was always the arrogant that underestimated him and died first. If I am not such a big threat to you, why is Itachi still trying to cast me in a genjutsu with his eyes like he has with everyone else he has faced throughout life? Asked Naruto while Itachi's eyes narrowed even more as he heard this. So you found a way to make yourself immune to my genjutsu, interesting, said Itachi while Naruto suddenly scowled as he looked at him. You can stop with the praise Itachi, I know why you two are here and it's not to insult me or speak small praises at what I do. I can also sense you two aren't the real deal, you hide it well. 
even showing the various abilities one would find in both the real Itachi and Kisame. But Uzumaki's sensory perception can see through that weak shit and right now I see two corpses being used as puppets to hold us off while my friend is being killed, so drop the jutsu and stand aside, said Naruto while Kisame grinned, since if you want to fight me then come at me yourselves, or else I will find you and kill you where you hide yourselves, I have sensed where you are and can be there in a few seconds if need be, consider this your first and final warning. Or else what brat? Demanded Kisame before he was suddenly and violently kicked in the midsection by Naruto sending the man flying back well over 200 feet. While Hokuto was a style that relied on the hands to deliver killing blows via pressure points, he still was trained as a shinobi in his youth and used his acquired skills to hurt his opponents before he went in for the kill, that and the fact that what he had kicked was a dead body so pressure points had died out with it made it redundant to use it. Fast, and strong, thought Itachi while glancing over at Kisame who had reverted back to the dead body they obtained for this jutsu. I am curious, how are you blocking my Sharingan's power? Asked Itachi curiously. Simple, my mind is too strong to succumb to your illusions, said Naruto with Itachi frowning further. I learned that if one is strong in mind they are immune to most illusions and I have spent years strengthening my mind to protect it from such things. I don't believe you are truly able to protect yourself from my eyes, said Itachi as he added more power to them but frowned as he saw that they were not doing what they were supposed to do, it is only because I am using a puppet with a fraction of my power that you are immune. So you tell yourself, said Naruto before he moved faster than even the fake Itachi's eyes could follow and was struck across the face where the eyes were located with the blonde's chakra, he channeled power into the seal that made the dead body a puppet and felt where the energy was going, he used it as an anchor to teleport to and appeared in the cave hideout that Kisame and Itachi were in, he saw them sitting there in a meditative state as they had to, to maintain control over their puppets. To say they were surprised would be an understatement as the looks of shock were apparent on their faces. Kisame was the first one to overcome the shock and pick up his blade and attack Naruto. Naruto easily dodged all the strikes he had thrown at him, but after the seventh one Naruto leapt over him, as he did he poked the side of his neck as landed behind him. Kisame's vision went blurry as he swung his sword blindly since he had no idea where Naruto was since the poke on his pressure point was messing with all his senses. Don't bother struggling said Naruto as he appeared in front of Kisame, seeing as he had just appeared out of nowhere Kisame jumped back in surprise, but Naruto poked him in the forehead, applying energy into a pressure point, his body went stiff as his arms flew out beside him. Hokuto. Bone crusher strike Kisame looked at his body as Naruto walked backwards from him in surprise since nothing happened. But that suddenly changed when his body began to bulge out in various places, within a few seconds Kisame exploded to the point that only his legs were back, and they fell over as there were no motor functions left to keep them level, Itachi fell backwards in fear seeing that his partner had just been killed so easily with a single touch, he quickly recovered from the shock of it though and quickly activated his eyes. Sukuyomi, said Itachi as he looked at Naruto, trapping him in his illusionary world, but if he had taken a second to look closer at Naruto, he would have seen the slight smirk on his face as he succumbed to the genjutsu. Illusion. Naruto was in a black world while being nailed to a cross, he knew exactly where he was since he had read about it years ago, Itachi appeared before him as he sat on a rock and looked up at him. For the next 72 hours you will suffer, said Itachi with an emotionless tone of voice that Naruto expected him to have since it went hand in hand with him. Well, said Naruto while rolling his eyes, while that seems like a good time for the two of us, I am gonna have to pass on that offer, he flexed his muscles a bit, and as he did lines of light flashed on his arms and broke free from the nails that held him in place. How did you do that? asked Itachi since that should NT be possible. What breaking free from my bindings, asked Naruto with a raised eyebrow. That alone is easy since I had years of forced practice courtesy of the village of Konoha. But if you think that is impressive, allow me to utterly blow your mind with this. Naruto then clapped his hands in front of him, and as he did the lines of light traveled towards the center of his chest where a complex seal was painted on him. As the seal activated, the world of the illusion changed to a polar opposite of what it was, instead of blackness, there was white everywhere, Itachi looked around in surprise, and before he was able to respond a chair appeared under him, knocking him off his feet and forcing him to take a seat, bindings wrapped around his arms and legs, making it so he couldn't move. What is this? This is a seal that was made a long time ago to counter this ability. Explain, since I have never heard of such a thing? Of course you wouldn't, said Naruto as he summoned up a chair and sat across from Itachi. Since your clan wouldn't want something like this to be widely known to the people. Plus your clan has the habit of omitting things from their history so that they look better than they really are, you are one of the only Uchiha in the recorded history of your clan, which the Uzumaki kept extensive records of by the way for safety purposes the likes of which are too numerous and I really don't care to explain, 
that strayed away from the path of the basic Uchiha mindset of they are the greatest. This still doesn't explain how you were able to counter my genjutsu like you did. Well that is simple to explain, about two generations into the founding of our clans. One of the females from your clan fell in love with one of the males from mine. I don't remember names even though they were written since honestly you are the only person I will probably ever tell this story to so remembering them is not really top of my to-do list. But they were in love, and while the Uzumaki were all for their union. The Uchiha were not, so they tried to separate them via threats. Force, politics, basically anything they could think of but nothing worked. Here older brother, who was the first ever Uchiha to wield the Sukuyomi tried to kill her by then husband. Or at least shatter his mind with it, she knew what he would do since she had seen that power firsthand. And with the help of my clan was able to make a counter seal for it. He didn't expect it and was defeated easily since he relied too much on it and didn't have the strength to challenge his sister's husband, it was meant to basically reverse the controller of this illusion, that seal was documented and placed alongside hundreds of others that my clan has made over its lifetime leading up to its destruction in the second shinobi war, I knew I would fight you at one point so I had it on my person for when that happened. So are you planning to torture me as I was going to do to you? No, said Naruto as he shook his head, I have no plans to torture you, I just want to talk since I have a few questions for you. And what exactly do you want to know? Why you were literally the only, and I emphasis the word only, shinobi on duty that protected me when you were still part of Konoha's forces. So you knew it was me, said Itachi with a bit of a smile. It wasn't very hard to find out when I followed you a few times to see who my protector was. How were you able to follow me? asked Itachi with a raised eyebrow since he had left the village when Naruto had begun his first year at the ninja academy at the age of eight so he had no prior training at the time and even then for a freshly trained shinobi to follow a highly trained anbu was unheard of. You were looking at a man who was able to evade shinobi of various levels from the age of five who were out to hurt me, said Naruto with a smile plastered on his face, so following you wasn't so hard when you weren't expecting me to follow. But how were you able to do it is the real question. You're seriously asking that question, asked Naruto, I am the son of two prodigies, with my mother being a strong Uzumaki as well as my father being the most infamous shinobi of his generation, plus throw in the fact that the demon sealed inside of me that everyone hated with a passion helped to train me in secret and I was a force to be reckoned with, how else would I have been able to pull off my pranks when I was younger? How no one was able to put two and two together only showed how arrogant they were in their belief that they not only knew me but controlled me as well. I played the fool they wanted. Yet I knew of my parents when they held that information from me, I knew that those who called themselves my friends were not really that since I was not stupid in the slightest and I overheard their parents speaking to them, I always knew that I would leave that village one day, which was why I took all that belonged to me out of it so they couldn't take it for themselves when I did. That is fairly impressive, you truly are Kashina's son. Now it is your turn to answer my question, why did you protect me? It was years ago, back when I was still a child growing up and the Yondaimi had yet to be made the Yondaimi Hokage. Kashina was thinking about taking on an apprentice. But the pickings were slim, and few were even less worthy than anyone would be now in the leaf. She was walking by one day, seeing me train hard at one of the more open training grounds, and saw my potential before anyone else, so she asked me, your mother asked me to be her apprentice in the shinobi arts, answered Itachi while Naruto simply raised an eyebrow at this tad bit of information since he didn't expect that, he was thinking more along the lines his mother saving him or something. If what you said is true, did she ever get around to teaching you the sealing arts our clan was known for, asked Naruto. No, she didn't have time to teach me that at all, my idiot father found out and went to the Sandame Hokage before his retirement to ban her completely from ever continuing the apprenticeship, he felt the Uchiha clan's pride was above the training of an Uzumaki in the ways of being a shinobi no matter what the subject. Not so surprising given the Uchiha's history, said Naruto as he nodded his head. The Sandame then told your father that Kashina would stop teaching me or else the mantle of Hokage would go to my father instead. I don't have to tell you how your father viewed Kashina being the Kayubi Jinchuriki or the fact your mother refused to marry him when he asked. My own mother was a silver medal to him and he was always jealous of your father for taking what he felt was rightfully his to have in life. After word got out about you being the new Jinchuriki, my father made a move to get you adopted into the clan, but only for his ends of turning you into a pet and weapon to use against the newly reinstated Sandame Hokage when the time came, to keep the Uchiha clan from gaining such favor, the Sandame, the Shinobi Council, and Danzo all spread word that Kayubi had a connection with the Uchiha clan in general to create speculation among the masses about our loyalty, explained Itachi with Naruto nodding since he figured as such. In another lifetime, said Naruto with a sigh as he stood up, we could have been like brothers. 
I would have liked that, said Itachi with a genuine smile on his face, which was truly rare, you are everything that I wished for Sasuke to be, but things didn't go the way I planned for them to go. For what it's worth, said Naruto as he prepared himself for what he needed to do as the genjutsu broke and they were back in the real world, Itachi was still unable to move since the seal to counter his genjutsu had a paralyzing effect on the caster of the original jutsu, I am sorry for what I must do, but I need your head to use as a message to not only your brother, but the rest of Konoha itself to tell them that I not one to be fucked with. I understand, said Itachi with a smile, Naruto got into an attacking stance, and quickly wiped away the single tear that fell from his eye because he had to hurt the only person who saved him in the village, but he sucked it up and did what he needed to do. Ten minutes later, Naruto continued walking towards his destination, but he now had a medium-sized scroll on his back that contained the head of Itachi Uchiha, as he walked, he felt his friend Gara's energy fading fast so he decided to hurry up a bit and eventually came to a large boulder that blocked the entrance to the hideout they were holding him. I am not sure what they were thinking when they thought of the door. Said Naruto as he saw the boulder, this literally just screams evil lair with all the red flags that go with it. Naruto saw the seal that was on it that was enhanced by several others in the area that had to be pulled if he was to remove this one. But Naruto decided to take the lazy route, which would make any of the Nara proud knowing that he was doing so and simply punched the boulder, the seal basically made the boulder stronger than it naturally was, but since Naruto was trained by a man who could literally punch down a skyscraper and he was stronger than Kanshiro as was the case with the Hokuto successor, and breaking a seal enhanced boulder was quite easy to pull off. As he walked in, he saw what seemed like projections of some sort vanish. And all that was left in the room were three figures. One had slanted blue eyes and long golden blonde hair which he wore drawn into a half ponytail with the rest hanging down freely. Naruto recognized him as Didera since he had read a bingo book in his spare time to get to know any and all potential future opponents, he recognized the other one as Sasori, but that wasn't important right now since his attention was on the dead body of his friend Gara right now, Naruto's anger surged from him since he had been too late to save him, but he didn't despair since he would avenge him. Who the hell are you? asked Didera as he gathered some clay in his hand to kill this guy. The worst kind of person to piss off, said Naruto as he walked towards him as he cracked his knuckles. Didera freaked out as he did, and attacked by throwing small clay birds at him since he was a long range fighter and it seemed like his opponent was short range, the birds flew forward and hit their mark which made Didera smirk thinking that he had killed him, but that smirk quickly disappeared when the smoke cleared and he saw that Naruto was unharmed and still walking towards him. Sasori decided to try his hand at attacking him, launching his razor sharp tail at an ultra fast speed, but to Naruto it appeared to be moving far slower than it actually was so dodging was easy for him to do. He grabbed the tail with a single hand and pulled hard enough to break it off from Sasori, he then used it to swipe it at the two of them, which hid Didera with enough force to launch him backwards, yet it broke Sasori's outer puppet skin so that his real body now showed to Naruto. So you hid yourself in a puppet, said Naruto as he got into a fighting stance, that was very clever, but I am not here to compliment you, I am here to kill the two of you. Sasori didn't say a word, but instead launched strings from his back that attached themselves to his arm. Sasori pulled hard to bring Naruto towards him, but he found out that Naruto was like a solid boulder and stood still. Naruto just smirked at his attempt before he turned the tables and pulled Sasori towards him himself, before Sasori could respond. Naruto had punched him in his vital pressure points before he slammed his open palm into his chest to force him backwards away from him. Naruto stood there and counted to three, but then frowned when nothing happened, he was certain that he had hit his pressure points. I see that you fight like the Hyuga do and aim for chakra points, said Sasori as he pulled out a scroll that when he opened up summoned the puppet he made out of the third case cage, but that won't work on me since I have made myself a puppet myself. While that may be true, said Naruto with a smirk, and he thought himself lucky that in his travels back towards the elemental nations when he was done burying Kanshiro he had met a man who taught him the basics of a style that were the complete opposite of Hokuto. But hitting your pressure point is not the only thing that I learned in my travel. While I am no master of the Nanto style of fighting, I learned the basics on the off chance I needed to use them on someone like you. Naruto then charged forward with curved fingers instead of solid fists since he was going to cut instead of punch. Sasori launched his puppet to intercept Naruto, but it was already too late since he was there one moment, but was behind him a second later. Sasori saw his puppet burst into pieces, and Sasori was able to look behind him and see Naruto before his body exploded into pieces as well. I really hate using that style said Naruto with a sigh as he stepped over to the pieces of Sasori's body and stopped when he saw the canister that contained his heart, Naruto picked it up and crushed it with his hands, ending Sasori's life once and for all, he stood there for a bit contemplating on what would drive a man to go so far as to make themselves into a puppet like he had, as he stood there thinking about it he was hit in the back with more explosions that Didera had thrown at him. 
Hey genius, said Naruto as he turned around in anger that he had been attacked from behind like he had, that didn't work the first time, so what could have possibly went through your mind to make you try again when the first time didn't work? I am optimistic, said Didera as he prepared a larger dose of explosive clay this time, unlike you, you came here all by yourself and expected to beat us? And you have the gall to insult me? Is the dead body lying in pieces not a clear indication on how this is all going to play out for you? said Naruto as he stood there with a grin on his face, plus you really are stupid for saying that. And what the hell do you mean by that? I didn't come alone, said Naruto with a chuckle, Didera looked at him with a look of confusion on his face, that look of confusion was quickly replaced with a look of pain as he was pierced through the chest with three fox tails, Didera began to bleed out his mouth and cried out in pain as the tails inside of him pulled him into three separate pieces. Good to see you Kurama, said Naruto as he saw the Kyubi burn the body into ash. Well I wasn't going to let you have all the fun, said Kurama as he walked with Naruto towards Gara's body. While it was true that the Kyubi was free to roam the world as he wished, he had grown attached to Naruto over the years of being sealed within him and healing him, he was able to go back into the seal whenever he wanted to or if Naruto required his power, he slept in there most of the time since now that he had freedom he was able to use his power to spruce up his caged area to his tastes, Naruto had basically become his mobile home. Naruto need his power at the moment to have a chance to revive Gara. So Kurama jumped back into the seal to add his power to Naruto. Naruto channeled power into his hands and placed them on his chest. There he added electricity that surged through his body along with healing chakra. He continued to pulse more and more energy into him. And when all seemed lost he finally felt a pulse, Gara began to cough hard as his body filled with air once more. Naruto smiled to see his friend alive once more but he would need to see a proper medic for a checkup once he got back to the village, he was just about to pick up Gara's body to Hiroshin out towards Suna, which he mentally patted himself on the back over the fact that he threw a kanai when he had started walking this way so he could get back quicker, when he sensed five people behind him. Well if it isn't the three people who I wish to never see again in my lifetime, said Naruto as he got to his feet, he looked to see his old team standing there along with a young man with a fake smile on his face and another John and Shinobi he had never seen before, but his energy felt familiar somehow. Naruto, said Kakashi in surprise since he hadn't expected to find him here of all places. Good to see that you remember my name even after all these years, it's been seven, and damn you all look better for it I have to admit. Sakura finally got some tits on her that are visible, and Sasuke has longer hair. Naruto, said Sasuke with a grin since he saw a chance at gaining retribution for his humiliating defeat all those years ago, at last I can sell the score between us and personally send you to hell myself. Yeah, shouted Sakura in agreement but Naruto just rolled his eyes at seeing the banshee still being an Uchiha fangirl even after all these years. You couldn't beat me before when we fought even when I had little to no training and you had all that you could handle, so what makes you think that things will change now? I have been trained by the Sanin Jiraiya himself, something that you were never allowed to finish since you were pathetic. And is that supposed to make me feel scared? Cause Jiraiya is a joke as a teacher, and in the seven years I have been away I was trained by a man who is stronger than all three of the Sanin combined. And what is the name of the man who would teach you anything? asked Sasuke. It doesn't really matter since the man died two years ago. I know this since I buried the man next to his wife when he passed. But I am glad that I ran into you here of all places since I come bearing a gift for you Sasuke. Naruto took the scroll off his back and tossed it to Sasuke, who used his eyes to see if there was a trap of some sort on it, but saw none so he opened it up and activated the seal. Once activated a wooden box appeared in his hands, which he opened and then immediately dropped in shock, inside of the box was his older brother's head, when he dropped it, the box exploded so that there was nothing left of it once the smoke cleared. How does it feel to have the very purpose that drives you forward in life being taken from you? asked Naruto with a smirk, he felt as Sasuke's anger rose up exponentially and he charged a senjutsu enhanced chidori into his hand. It'll kill you, said Sasuke as he charged forward to kill the man who had made it so he could never avenge his clan. Kakashi tried to stop him, but Sasuke moved too quickly for him to stop, Naruto just grinned as he easily dodged his jutsu and grabbed him by the throat. You know what I like about you, said Naruto as he channeled power into a finger on his opposite hand. You are so easy to manipulate, and for that I will grant you a gift so that the next time we meet you can fight me at full power so there are no excuses when you die by my hands. Naruto then poked him between the eyes, which caused him to scream in pain. Before he threw him towards team 7 that had begun to charge at him. He took them being knocked over as a perfect chance to grab Gara and Hiroshin out before they could see him use it since they were too busy getting Sasuke off of them, and by the time that they got back to their feet, they saw that Naruto as well as Gara were gone, yet before they left, 
They saw Sasuke smiling as his eyes bled since his Mangekio Sharingan had been unlocked, he now had the power he needed to kill the Dobi once and for all. Suna. Naruto returned Gara back to his home village to the surprise of his sister. Who had along with the rest of the village thought he had died seven years ago, she was happy to see both him as well as her brother safe and sound, while Gara was given a checkup to make sure everything was fine, and as they did that, Naruto used his chakra to extract the poison that Konkuro had been injected with when he had fought Sasori to protect his family, it took a bit of concentration, but he was able to expel it from his body. It was when he finished helping Konkuro that Gara had been given the go ahead to leave the hospital. He had invited Naruto over to his house to thank him for helping him as well as reviving him. They shared a bottle of special sake that he had been saving for a special occasion. And being resurrected by a friend he thought dead seemed like a perfect occasion to drink it. As they drank, he and Naruto talked of many things pertaining to the future of the world as it was going on at the time as well as Naruto's travels in the west. Tamari joined in on the drinking, and as she did Naruto noticed her checking him out as she drank. It didn't take long for Tamari to get drunk and walk away, which Gara explained that she was a lightweight when it came to alcohol. Gara invited him to stay in their guest room for a few days, he had offered the room for longer, but Naruto mentioned that he had to get somewhere so a few days was all he could spare. Gara had turned in for the night, and Naruto had gotten comfortable in his bed when he heard the door to the room open, and he saw Tamari come in and close the door behind her. He raised an eyebrow, all the while drinking more sake he had bought earlier what are you doing here? Tamari lied down on the bed, turning to him with a smile. I broke up with Shikamaru when you were banished seven years ago, she replied, while he filled took another swig of his sake. That's good to know, but why are you in my room though? He asked, as she pouted. Can't I have a drink with an old friend? She whined. Naruto sighed, picking up another bottle of sake and giving it to her. She gulped it down instantly, but then her face became red after she consumed it. He raised an eyebrow at her change of color, as she started panting. He turned to the bottle, only to widen his eyes in remembrance. He had bought it from a man who when he was asked what he was looking for, he said that he needed some strong drinks for a fun night with friends, the man must have taken that description a bit too literal since he smelled the aphrodisiac that had been brewed into this sake. His immunity to drugs and poisons from consuming them over the years made the aphrodisiac pointless towards him. Tamari arose with a lustful look on her face, she grinned seductively, as she jumped on his lap. The moment she laid on top of him, he pushed his lips to her. His tongue asking for entrance, she opened her mouth. As he greedily attacked the insides of her mouth, their tongues battling for dominance. She moaned in the kiss, her hands ripping off his shirt. As she felt his muscles and started grinding herself on him, he growled, as he ripped off her upper clothing, and then started kissing her neck, attacking the breasts with his hands and twisting the nipples, the fact that he was fucking his friend's sister, who threw herself at him willingly only made it hotter for him, she moaned loudly, as her nails dug in on his shoulder, grinding her ass upon his massive erection, he then took one arm from her breasts and started fondling her ass, before raising himself, as she wrapped her legs around his waist. He began sucking on her free breast, biting her lowly on her nipples. As her moans filled the room, he kept sucking her breasts for a full minute. Before he dropped her to the ground, ripping off his pants and boxers. She licked her lips in lust, before attacking his 13-inch monster. She instantly deep-throated him, taking most of his length except 4 inches. She had only ever had sex once with Shikamaru in the past, but he wasn't as big or dominating as Naruto was, which was she really wanted in a man, she started bobbing her head up and down, her hand working on the remaining part that she couldn't put in her mouth. She swirled her tongue around his length, feeling every inch, every nerve, as he held her head tightly, she kept going for ten minutes, until Naruto grabbed her and threw her on the bed with force. He sat on top of her, pushing his dick between her breasts as she held them in place to make them squeeze his dick. He started thrusting as she used her melons to pleasure him, her mouth swirling over the few uncovered inches, he kept thrusting for five minutes, before releasing his load, three enormous spurts fell onto her face, by the time he was finished, her entire face and breasts were covered in cum, she licked the remaining cum from his tool, before she sensually licked off the cum from her face and breasts, making Naruto even hornier, as his dick was instantly back to full mast. He grabbed her and tossed her to the wall, her back turned to him. He ripped off her pants and thong, before sheathing himself inside her in one go. She screamed in pleasure, as he started thrusting in and out of her, he was kissing her neck and fondling her breasts from behind, as his cock disappeared inside her tight pussy. Her juices started flowing down her legs, as he then lowered one hand towards her clit, rubbing it, she started moaning louder, her walls tightening around his dick, as he repeatedly thrusted in her G-spot, under one minute of his actions, she screamed in pleasure, orgasming. 
He growled while pistoning in and out of her, before roaring. Releasing inside her, she panted from all the hardcore fucking, however he wasn't done with her, he spread her legs open, before thrusting inside her ass, as she screamed in shock since it was unexpected, he moaned, as she seemed to instantly milk him, he thrusted slowly, picking up pace the more she started to open up to him, he started licking her earlobe, as his hips were a literal blur, her yells increased the more he fucked her. Naruto. She screamed, coming again, Naruto roared in pleasure before painting her insides white. He panted, before turning her around and raising her up, pushing her towards the wall once more, her breasts smashing against his chest this time. He sheathed himself in her pussy again, as she moaned, he started thrusting himself inside her, not giving her a chance to breathe, as his hips felt like they could crush trees with the frequency they moved, his dick hit her g-spot repeatedly, causing her to moan, he kissed her, as they both came together, semen and love juices trickling down her legs, she panted, before being thrown to the bed again, this wasn't over in his book, not by one bit. And Tamari loved every second of it, the next day. Tamari woke up from a deep sleep that took all of her stress of the constant missions she had been on over the past few weeks away. She felt two arms wrapped around her waist and something hard but still warm on her back and then she felt the face of Naruto buried in the back of her neck and blushed as memories of last night came back and she tried to scoot out of his grip to avoid the embarrassing position Naruto would wake up in but he pulled her closer and buried his face in the back of neck a bit more as her blush intensified. She decided to sleep a bit more and closed her eyes and got comfortable and prepared for the embarrassment to come. Downstairs an exhausted Gara and Konkuro came in and sat down on the couch, Konkuro had been released from the hospital a few hours ago and had come straight home after he had left it. Man that poison was a bitch to get over, thank Kami that Naruto was there to help us, said Konkuro as Gara nodded in agreement, they had both faced the Akatsuki members sent to capture Gara, and both were too tough for them to defeat. Hey where's Tamari? She's usually up and about now, asked Konkuro and Gara nodded himself wondering the same thing. Yes she must be sleeping in, he said monotonously as he and Konkuro got up and walked towards the stairs. Alright I'll wake her up, make us some breakfast and then sleep, the food at the hospital sucks, he said and Gara nodded since he had eaten it before when he was younger and it did indeed suck, he followed him upstairs as he too had to get something in his room, Konkuro walked to Tamari's room and knocked, but he got no answer, he knocked again a couple of times and called her but still got no answer, Gara walked out of his room and saw him standing in front of her door still. What's wrong? He asked stoically and Konkuro turned around. Tamari isn't answering the door, should we, you know, go in? He asked nervously and Gara went into a deep thought for a brief moment, Tamari didn't like anyone coming into her room especially in the morning and would chase them out while throwing any and all sharp objects she could get her hands on, but he had his sand to keep him safe, but Konkuro, well he wasn't so lucky. Yes we should, he said and Konkuro nodded and opened the door as both peeked in to see the room empty and grew confused since they knew Tamari was home last night, then an idea came to Gara's mind since he remembered the looks she had given Naruto after she got drunk last night. Konkuro I have an idea as to where she may be, he said and walked towards the guest room with Konkuro in tow. Who was totally confused but shrugged and followed as Gara opened and entered the room with Konkuro behind him and stopped dead in their tracks as they saw Damari. They were shocked as they saw her snuggled with Naruto under a blanket that covered their naked bodies. Konkuro's jaw dropped to the ground and started muttering incoherent words pointing his index finger at the blondes in bed as Gara's eyes too were wide for a few moments. Tamari was sleeping with her back against Naruto's chest as he had pulled her closer with his arms wrapped around her waist and his face buried in her flowing blonde hair. Tamari woke up fully hearing her brother freak out. And as she saw them standing there, she screamed out in shock as she wrapped her body up in the blanket that covered the two of them and ran to her room. All the while her body was a crimson red from embarrassment, Konkuro fainted as she rushed past him since he couldn't get over the fact that she just caught his sister in bed with someone, while he was in shock about it all. Gara just silently nodded in agreement since he saw Naruto as good enough to date his sister, and used his sand to drag Konkuro to his room to get some rest while he cooked breakfast. Naruto stayed for three days as he said he would, and as he stayed Tamari went out of her way to avoid him since she was embarrassed about what had happened. But right as he packed up with some supplies and made his way to the village gate, she appeared and talked with him about the status of their relationship, he told her the truth of the fact that he was married but he qualified for the clan restoration act since he was the only male Uzumaki, she gave him a kiss goodbye, and he gave her a slap on the ass that made her face lit up in pleasure, she turned around to say something to him, but he was already gone. Tamari looked off and saw a dot in the far distance, and as it disappeared she felt lonely and wanted Naruto back already to hold her, but she was a patient woman and could wait until he returned to jump him again, and this time without the need of an aphrodisiac. Spring Country Naruto walked through the beautiful countryside as he made his way towards his friend Koyuki's palace. 
He hadn't been here for quite some time, but he still was able to enjoy the view since he took his time walking. While it was true that his plan was on a timed schedule, the deadline had had been extended greatly since he now had the aid of both Iwa and Kumo as well. Onoki had told him via one of his villages summons that Kumo was along for the ride as long as he performed his portion of the plan as agreed. Which he would since he had no love for the village at all since they all hated him and he didn't care for their survival, all Kumo really wanted in the end was a Hyuga for their village to breed, and they would get more than one once all went as planned, Naruto had already taken what was his by birthright out of the village so the rest of what was in it was up for grabs. As he neared the capital of spring country, he was quickly surrounded by a group of shinobi mixed with samurai. Naruto raised an eyebrow at seeing this since this was the first time he had ever seen them work in sync like they were now, but then again this section of the world didn't have a proper shinobi village so they would mostly have samurai, so it wasn't so far-fetched to see them working in unison like this. State the reason that you are here and unveil your face, said the captain of the group as the rest of them brandished their weapons in preparation of a scuffle. It's okay, said Naruto as he pulled his hood off, my name is Naruto Uzumaki, and I am simply here to see my friend Koyuki. The men surrounding him grew angry as they heard that name being said. You dare claim to be our country's hero, shouted the captain in rage, he died because those bastards in Konoha killed him. They tried to, laughed Naruto, but they didn't succeed in their attempts. Bind him, said the captain, you are under arrest for the dishonoring of our country's hero. We will bring him before Koyuki to judge personally, Naruto's first instinct was to fight them, but once he heard the second part about being taken to Koyuki, he decided to allow them to bind him without a fight since he could easily break free from them if needed, so when they were done they marched him through the streets towards the palace, where he was brought to the throne room and brought to his knees in front of Koyuki himself. Why have you brought this man before me, said Koyuki as she looked at Naruto, but since he had bulked up so much because of time and his training she wasn't able to recognize him. He has dishonored our hero by claiming to be him your highness, said the captain as he kneeled in front of her. How dare you claim to be Naruto, said Koyuki in anger as she got up out of her seat and walked towards him, she grabbed him by the head and forced him to look at her in the eyes, give me one good reason to not order your execution right now. Because I know you won't kill the man who saved you no less than three times in the past, said Naruto with a smirk, as I told you years ago, no matter how much you hate it, it'll come after you wherever you are, then I saved you by outrunning a train, Koyuki took a step back as he said that, which made Naruto laugh since he saw that she now remembered him. Naruto, she said with a hint of worry that this was some sort of trick, is that really you? In the flesh, said Naruto as he got back onto his feet, he broke the bindings on his hands easily as he opened his arms out in a hugging gesture. Koyuki took the hint and hugged him with tears in her eyes since her friend was alive when she as well as everyone else had assumed he was dead. Naruto used his thumb to wipe away the tears in her eyes, come on now, there is no need for tears. I am just so glad that you are alive, said Koyuki with a smile, where have you been all these years? I have been past the wall with my sensei, said Naruto as he crossed his arms with a smirk on his face, I was trained in the wastelands past them in a fighting style that trumps many in existence, while there I bulked up as you can plainly see for yourself, Koyuki did as he said that and had to hide a blush since his muscles made him far more attractive than he was when he was a kid and saved her. While I am glad that you are here alive and well, said Koyuki as she sat back down on her throne, she made a hand motion towards her guards since they were not needed to protect her from their hero, I have to ask why you're here now. What, said Naruto with a grin, I can't come and visit a friend after not seeing them for eight years. As he said that, Koyuki just looked at him with a are you kidding look on her face, okay you got me there, I need a favor that only you can help me with. And what favor can I help you with, said Koyuki with a hint of lust in her voice. She was hoping that Naruto was hinting towards an intimate encounter since for the past several years her advisors wanted her to bear an heir to the throne so that there wasn't any sort of power struggle in the future but she had been against it for the longest of time since she felt like no man was right for her, now the man who had saved her life had not only arrived but was far more attractive than he was years ago so she could use him to sire an heir for her. I need diplomatic status to enter Konoha, said Naruto, his words snapped Koyuki out of her fantasy since it was the absolute last thing she expected to hear from him. Why do you need or even want to go back to the village that everyone thought killed you? I have a plan that requires that I go back to do a few things, said Naruto as he shrugged his shoulders, and while I really don't want to go there, I will need diplomatic status to stop them from trying to control me, which I know that is exactly what they want to do to me. What are your plans there? I would rather keep that information to myself, said Naruto with a smile, just so I know that the plan isn't leaked in advance. Well I trust you, said Koyuki, who thought about what was being asked, she then smirked as she looked at Naruto, 
who knew exactly where her mind was at since his wife had the same look before she all but jumped him and he fucked her for the next hour or two, and I will grant you what you wish, but I want a favor in return. I know exactly where you are going with this, chuckled Naruto, so do you want to do it here with the chance of your staff walking in on us or do you want to do it somewhere more private? Koyuki just coughed in surprise that Naruto had been so blunt about it and was blushing up a storm as she did, she quickly overcame her coughing fit and grabbed him by the hand and led him to her bedroom, once inside she kissed him deep with tongue before he could react. Wait, said Naruto as he pulled her lips away from his, before we do this I need to tell you something. And what is that? I am married already, said Naruto, which made Koyuki stiffen with trace amounts of rage since her hero was a lecherous pig who was cheating on his wife. And yet you are here to seduce me? You pig, whoa, said Naruto while holding his hand up in mock defense, I may be married, but I am also the last male of my clan so I can have multiple wives since I qualify for the clan restoration act. You do, said Koyuki as her anger subsided, and your wife is okay with this? Oh of course she is, the only thing is I have to tell her exactly who I fucked and be completely honest about how I did it, she is kinky like that and constantly drains the clones I send to satisfy her. Oh, was all Koyuki could say about that, Naruto then grabbed her by the waist and pulled her into another kiss. Naruto soon began to reach for the sash to her kimono. But not before looking into Koyuki's eyes asking for permission. Koyuki responded with a wink and with that Naruto undid the sash and she broke the kiss to allow the robe to fall off. In response, Koyuki slid her hands down to the hem of Naruto's shirt and pulled it off. She then made quick work of his pants and boxers which by now resembled a tent with his erection at full strength. Both lovers gazed at each other's bodies with admiration and personal lust, Koyuki had fair skin, a smooth flat abdomen on a slender waist, wide curvy hips, long legs with toned thighs, and sizable and perky breasts, Naruto had broad shoulders on long toned arms, a strong chest with chiseled abs, long powerfully built legs and his long 13 inch member which looked so tantalizing to her. Koyuki, you look absolutely stunning, Naruto said making Koyuki blush from the compliment. You're quite the looker yourself Naruto, Koyuki replied. The next moment Koyuki laid on her back with her legs spread apart and Naruto lay in front of her and licked his lips as he gripped her folds and spread them apart to see walls of pure wetness that looked tasty to him. Naruto decided to start by teasingly running his tongue across Koyuki's clit while using his fingers to prod away at her moist insides. She moaned at this as the blonde traced her folds and teasingly rubbed his fingers on her clit. Naruto continued to work his fingers on Koyuki's clit as Koyuki continued to moan in pleasure at her lower regions being teased by the short-haired blonde, she thought Naruto's tongue was very skilled inside her and wondered what he did to his wife that made him this good at it. Naruto then snaked his right hand up her slender body and began to toy with and caress her breasts. This only served to make the dark-haired woman wetter and raised her arousal even further as now her face was covered in a deep blush. Naruto continued to hungrily lick away at Koyuki's folds as he teased and fondled her breasts with Koyuki helping him fondle her tits as an aroused result. Koyuki whimpered as Naruto worked his skilled tongue on her wet innards. Naruto then took his hands off her breasts and brought them to her perfectly shaped ass and lifted it up bringing her closer to him. This in effect caused the pleasure Koyuki felt to double and by now she was screaming in total pleasure. Naruto felt Koyuki's insides begin to tighten around his tongue and knew she would come at any second, knowing this, he continued to work his tongue faster inside of her while swaying his tongue from side to side, eventually Naruto met his success as Koyuki came to her release and released her inner fluids onto his tongue, Naruto drank up all of her delicious fluids taking care not to leave a single drop behind. Koyuki you taste just too damn good to me, Naruto said to Koyuki who blushed even harder as she heard that. Thanks Naruto, now how about I return the favor so I can say the same about you, Koyuki said with a seductive smile. Works for me. Naruto smirked as he sat in front of the bed with Koyuki kneeling down in front of him. His cock directly in front of her face, Koyuki smiled at the sheer size of it as she gripped his cock and began to jerk him off. Naruto lowly moaned at her soft touch as she continued to pump his shaft with her right hand while using her left to bounce and toy with his balls. Koyuki then began to tease the blonde male by trailing her tongue from the underside of Naruto's ball sack all the way to the tip of his manhood, Naruto shivered at the feeling of Koyuki's hot tongue on his cock. Koyuki continued to trail her tongue on Naruto's shaft before taking the head of Naruto's erection into her mouth, Naruto moaned in pleasure from the warmth of Koyuki's mouth as she swirled her tongue around his shaft. She then took Naruto's cock as far down her throat as it would go. Fighting back her annoying gag reflex, Naruto's eyes went white as Koyuki continued to suck on his cock while using her vocal cords to stimulate him. She then took it a step further by cupping her well-endowed breasts and enclosing the bottom half of Naruto's cock in them. 
with the combined feeling of Koyuki's warm mouth and her soft breasts on his cock. Naruto was sure that he would come at any second, Koyuki soon felt Naruto's member begin to twitch inside her mouth and could tell that he was about to come, knowing this, she began to work her tongue on his cock faster while continuing her pasery strokes on Naruto's cock, soon Naruto came to his release as his cock spasms sending a thick torrent of semen into Koyuki's mouth, Koyuki swallowed her fill of the semen and released his cock from her mouth and breasts. Naruto came down from his pleasurable high and barely had time to breathe before Koyuki was all over him kissing his face and chest. Naruto returned the kisses as the two continued their heated makeout session. The next moment Koyuki was on her hands and knees in the middle of the bed and she looked back at Naruto and seductively licked her lips at him to entice him. It worked as Naruto got behind her and began to tease the dark-haired woman by rubbing the head of his erection on her folds making Koyuki blush in the process. He then gave Koyuki a playful spank before sliding himself into her taking her virginity by slamming his dick into her all the way to the base. Naruto found Koyuki's pussy to be warm and tight while Koyuki found Naruto's manhood to be hard and thick and stretched her to her limits, Naruto let the warmth of Koyuki's pussy surround his length before he started pounding into her. Koyuki moaned loudly as Naruto pounded into her at a vigorous pace. She began to work her hips to meet his thrusts as her body rocked from the power force of his thrusts. Naruto moaned in pleasure as Koyuki's plump ass smacked against his crotch while he thrust into her with relenting speed. Koyuki's ample bust heaved from his relentless pounding as Naruto watched them mesmerized. Naruto then let go of Koyuki's hips and cupped her swaying breasts and began to toy with and fondle them. Koyuki whimpered in pleasure at the blonde's teasing of her sensitive tits and his unrelenting thrusting. Sweat began to pour from both of their bodies as Naruto continued to send his dick flying into her pussy with unbelievable speed and power and eventually Koyuki decided to give up on moving her hips and just let him do all the work. Koyuki's eyes went white as Naruto continued to pleasure her jiggling breasts while continuously sending his cock jetting into her core. Koyuki turned her head and planted her lips on Naruto's in a passionate kiss. Electric blue eyes gazed endlessly into light-colored soulful ones as the pair's tongues danced wildly in each other's mouths. Koyuki and Naruto moaned into the kiss as Naruto continued to squeeze and pinch Koyuki's breasts while slamming his length into her core. With one final thrust, Koyuki's pussy wrapped around her lover's cock causing Naruto's cock to spasm and flood her womb with semen. The couple panted as Naruto released Koyuki's breasts allowing her to fall forward. Naruto cuddled up next to Koyuki and smiled at his dark-haired lover as the two affectionately nuzzled each other. Naruto you sure know how to show a princess a good time, Koyuki said. Well would you care for me to show you some more good times Koyuki? My wife and I usually go at it for hours, Naruto asked. Sure, I am game, said Koyuki who laid on her back and spread her legs apart before Naruto got on top of her and began to rub the head of his still erect member on her folds making her blush return in full to her face. Naruto soon re-entered Koyuki's warmth and began a new barrage of thrusts into her tight soaking heat while she began to buck her hips to match his thrusts. They would continue like this for hours like him and Tsunami would do. But Koyuki loved every second of it and was begging for more the whole time until her body went numb from the pleasure. In the end, Naruto gave her what she wanted with his seed by impregnating her with an heir to the throne. And Naruto was given the diplomatic status he wanted. It took a week and a half for the message to be given to the fire daimyo. And just as long for a message to be sent back, the entire time that they were waiting for a response. Naruto told her tales of the wastelands past the walls and the people he met on his travel, and at night he would continue to fuck her brains out since she still had her duty as a daimyo to uphold during the day, hell he even teleported home to get his wife and introduced the two of them before he took them both at the same time with clones, having them kissing each other while he fucked both their holes at once only made it hotter for them. But all good things come to an end, and while in the end Koyuki was confirmed pregnant along with Tsunami. Which didn't surprise Naruto after screwing them for three weeks straight. A message came back from the fire daimyo himself stating that Naruto wouldn't be harmed while in his country. Naruto knew that it was only because of the threat of utter destruction from the combined might of two countries that he ate crow and granted Naruto diplomatic status. Naruto would never forgive the man for not only allowing his suffering to continue in his youth. But also conspired with his abusers in an attempt to rob him blind. So while he knew that the daimyo was giving him this status right now, if things had gone differently the fire daimyo would be torturing him to force him to surrender his possessions, so now that he had what he needed, and his lovers had what they wanted and then some, he took the scroll that had arrived for him and made his way towards Konoha. One week later, Konoha, Naruto arrived at the village with his hands in his pocket as well as his hood up in a stance that read I don't care. He walked up to the two guards on duty, which surprised him a bit since he was certain that there would have been more given the fact that they were in the middle of preparing for war. 
But then again, their numbers could be running thin as is so this was probably all they could spare. He handed the scroll that was given to him by Koyuki to the guards. Who read it and looked at him with hatred in their eyes since they wanted to run him through with their weapons, but he had diplomatic status and was not to be attacked, he took the scroll back as one of them told him to wait so that the higher ups could gather for the meeting he was here for. Naruto simply walked past the remaining guard, who tried to stop him, but he shoved him hard to the side, knocking him out from the force of his head hitting the wall behind him. Naruto walked towards a certain destination since he had some time to kill. And a score to settle with a certain duo from his past. And as he neared his destination, he was taken aback quite a bit to see that the Ichiruka ramen stand had become a full-fledged restaurant instead of the simple stand. It was quite large since it served many of the shinobi during the dinner as well as the lunch rush of the day. Naruto growled to himself as he saw this place since all the memories he had of it came back, it was quite easy to see why this place did so well when they were infamous in the village for their drugging as well as poisoning of the demon brat with their Naruto special that they made him with those goddamn smiles on their faces. Naruto had always known about the poison and drugs in his food. Since he was far smarter than he ever let on, but it was the least rotten thing he had to eat. And the chakra of the Kyubi filtered it out in a manner that made him immune to it over time. And given the frequency of his trips to their stand, his immunity for poison and drugs was fairly high and that was before his intensive training with Kanshiro for seven years. Naruto walked up to the door that had an open sign on it and went inside. The inside was fairly nice, with plenty of seating with multiple booths as well as square tables that could seat up to four people. Then there were the seats that were like the old stand was that were by the cooking station itself. There was a fireplace in the corner as well with the fire burning at the moment. Which gave the place a warm family feeling, on the wall was a paper that had been placed in a glassed frame, and as Naruto looked he saw the label Naruto Special, which listed all the poisonous ingredients that had been placed within it, alongside the recipe were pictures that had been taken of him when the villagers tortured him in his youth, and as he saw it he had to suppress the sheer rage that looking at them built up inside of him. As he had walked through the door, the little bell above the door rang to let whoever was in the back know there was a customer, and as expected Ayame appeared in her usual cooking attire to greet him. Hello. She said cheerfully with a smile as she greeted him, Only one of you, please take a seat at the counter sir. Naruto sat down at the counter and looked at his hands which he was holding together in a ball on the counter as he twiddled his thumbs. Here is a menu for you, said Ayame as she handed him a menu to look at, please let me know what it is that you want me to make. Where is Tuchi? asked Naruto, my father went to deliver a list of supplies he needed delivered to restock our inventory, have you selected what it is that you want sir? Yes, said Naruto with a smirk on his face that she was unable to see, I would like the usual please. I am sorry sir, said Ayame with a slight frown, but I don't know you well enough to know what you usually get. It'll take the Naruto special please, Ayame frowned fully as she heard that. Sir, we don't make that for people, we only made it to weaken the demon brat when he was younger. I know, said Naruto as he looked up and pulled down his hood, to which Ayame lost all color in her face as she saw who she was talking to, and I found it delicious when I was a kid so why not make it for me again? Nah, nah, Naruto, stuttered Ayame since she was deathly afraid of what was going to happen to her. Yes Ayame, said Naruto as he looked at her, it's your number one customer, he noticed that she was slowly backing up as he talked, and saw her hand move slowly to grab a knife to attack him, also that won't work, so don't even try. Ayame didn't heed his warning though and tried to slash at him with her cutting knife, Naruto just caught it with two fingers as he grinned at her and twisted his hand a bit to break the blade off at the handle. Ayame turned around to try to run away, but Naruto was one step ahead of her and kicked a section of the counter hard enough to break up and block the entrance to the kitchen. Ayame turned back around as she backed up to the blockade, now cornered. I am so going to enjoy this, said Naruto as he cracked his knuckles. Each crack made Ayame lose even more of the color in her face to the point that she was nearly paper white. Once more she tried to run away, but this time towards the front door, but Naruto got into a stance, and within a blink of an eye he punched her in multiple pressure points to which she began to cough out blood, after he landed the last blow, he grabbed her by the head and twisted her body around to face the fireplace. Hokuto. Burden of regret walk punch, an actual technique from the anime, weird name though. Ayame began to walk forward against her will towards the fireplace. She cried out the entire time for Naruto to show mercy. That she was sorry and that she felt remorse for what she had done. But Naruto didn't listen to any of it since she was full of shit. She walked directly into the fireplace, where her clothes lit a flame slowly and began to burn her. As she screamed in pain, Naruto placed a silencing seal on the wall and moved a chair next to the door but in a way that you didn't immediately see it once you entered. He watched for 12 minutes as Ayame burned alive in the fireplace before Tuchi showed up. 
Naruto would have liked to take his time to kill this prick in a manner that was gruesome. But he was short on time and just poked him in the head to paralyze him and threw him into the fireplace to burn along with his daughter without so much as a greeting or an explanation of why he was doing so. He made three shadow clones to do three separate things that needed to be done in the village, before he used the Hiroshin to teleport himself out. His clones left the establishment, but not before turning the sign to the closed side, where it would stay indefinitely. Twenty minutes later, the civilian council, the shinobi council, and the clan heads were all gathered in the meeting room as Naruto arrived. Naruto basically kicked the door open when he arrived with his hands in his pockets and took a seat in front of all of them. He sat there and leaned his chair back with his feet on the table. Naruto could sense all the hatred they had towards him, but it didn't matter to him since they couldn't do a damn thing to him if they didn't want to make their horrible situation even worse than it already was at the moment. So here we are again, said Naruto with a smirk on his face, and to think that seven years ago you all banished me from this village for doing my job while I sat in this very chair, bleeding from two separate wounds given to me by the Uchiha who you all love so much, oh how things come full circle in the end. Watch your mouth brat, said the head of the merchant district as he stood up in anger and slammed his hands against the table. He had let his hatred for Naruto be heard throughout the village ever since the boy could remember since the Kayubi had killed his wife and daughter and he would make the beast pay for as long as he lived. The only saving grace on his mental condition was the fact that he remarried years later and started his family anew with two new kids. He had told his family what had happened to his old family, and as he hoped they hated Naruto for what he was as well, once the seals on the brat's rightful home were broken. He even won the auction to move into it which became a personal victory in his book since he had taken what had rightfully to him which had been denied to him his entire life, give us one good reason that we should nt just capture you now and be done with it. Why don't you sit the fuck down and shut the hell up, said Naruto with a sliver of anger in his voice, his response had been unexpected since they all thought that Naruto was still somewhat of the same fool of a kid that he was years ago, sure he was physically stronger in appearance, but they all assumed that he was still weak in the mind. You dare speak to me in such a manner? said the civilian councilman in rage at being talked back to, Anbu. Capture this brat and hold nothing back. You would be wasting your time, said Naruto with a smirk on his face as he closed his eyes. And why is that, said Danzo with interest since he was planning to capture him as soon as he left the room anyway. Three simple reasons, said Naruto as he held up his hand with three fingers out, the first being that I am a shadow clone so hurting me or capturing me is meaningless in the end. That's impossible, said Kaharu. We sealed off your chakra when we banished you. Did you really think that I wouldn't be able to remove them? said Naruto with a smile of satisfaction. Jiraiya may consider himself a master in the art of sealing, but he is pathetic when it comes to the Uzumaki which is my clan, one that you have all failed to mention to me my whole life, or in the case of the elders and higher ups in their so called wisdom purposefully neglected to tell me. You watch your mouth, brat, said Jiraiya, who was now pissed that his sealing was being ridiculed. Come over here and make me pervert, said Naruto as he used his middle finger to make a come at me motion, but in the end I will just vanish and this meeting will end before it even starts, so shut your perverted ass up before I make you my bitch by shoving my hand up your ass and working you like a fucking puppet. Jiraiya growled as he was told that, but he conceded that Naruto was telling the truth there. Oh, said Naruto as he sensed it happening since his other shadow clone had dispersed, to whichever one of you assholes moved into the house that is mine, I burned it down with your family knocked out and inside, they're dead now. What? shouted the head of the merchants as he jumped out of his seat literally foaming at the mouth in rage, he was held back by three Anbu, you killed my family you demon. Hey, said Naruto as he shrugged his shoulders, I was set on fire seventeen times in my life, three times by your very hand, and I came out okay. You had no right, it was my house and they were trespassing, according to the laws of this very village I was within my right to do so and I acted on it, perhaps if your children were Jinchuriki instead of me then they would still be alive right now, wouldn't they? The council member broke free from the grip of the Anbu holding him, and charged at Naruto. Naruto simply chopped the air, which an experienced shinobi would have known to dodge, but the councilman was no such thing and was hit by the pressure behind it and knocked out cold. Reason number two, getting back on track here, said Naruto, is that you don't have the power to fight me. The shinobi who invaded Wave could attest to that, that is if they were still alive to tell you anything at all. You killed my shinobi, growled Tsunade as she heard this. This meant that Naruto was far stronger than they had believed so that controlling him would be more of a challenge than they had hoped. They were invading a neutral country and were going to kill my friends, said Naruto with a straight face, so you better believe I killed them, and Uzumaki protects their friends and family, not that you follow that philosophy which honestly makes me question if you were adopted into the clan since you failed to follow our most basic of creeds. Tsunade growled more as she heard Naruto insult her, but calmed herself since he would suffer later when it was all over. And the last reason said Naruto with another smile.
If somehow you were able to manage capturing me, the same person that gave me diplomatic immunity by talking to your daimyo would not only be pissed beyond all reason. But she has gone on to state that she would not only join the other two villages in this war but supply them with chakra armor and airships as well. You are already in a war with your chances of winning being slim to none, so think about it if your enemies get that tech, your chances would be reduced from slim to impossible, so if there is nothing else in the form of challenging me, let's get back to business since that is the reason that I am here. Fine, said Tsunade, as you are aware, we are at war with Kumo and Iwa, we have lost all of our alliances since you have been banished, we would like to offer you a full pardon of past crimes in return of returning to service. Is that all you are going to offer me, chuckled Naruto as he heard their so-called offer. You banished me for doing my job and bringing back the Uchiha in one piece instead of killing him like the traitor he was. You sealed off my chakra, which I unsealed with some help. And sent me out in the world all so you could steal what was rightfully mine. And to top off this lovely triple decker Sunday of bullshit you sent a group of hunter nin to kill me once and for all so that I wouldn't be able to claim what was mine in the future and bust you all for theft, you did all of that to me and you think that simply allowing me to work for you again is a good enough offer for my services then this meeting is over and I will relay what has been said here to the original me. Along with a pardon for returning to service, you will be granted a seat as a clan head, and as such the clan restoration act will be enacted so you may pick multiple wives to give birth to the next generation of Uzumaki. So you will allow me to sit in this room alongside the rest of you with the acknowledgement that I am a member of a clan that this village has cast out from the history books. Said Naruto as he rolled his eyes, where my one voice will never carry much weight in the broad scheme of things since all of you hate me, plus you will use me to breed a new vessel for you to contain Kyubi whenever you find a way to contain me, two things, the first of which is that I question just how stupid do you think I am. I am not the gullible, naive boy that you all thought I was, the second thing I need to mention is that I am already married and have a son, that last sentence caught them off guard. You are married? asked Tsunade in shock, to whom? Like I would tell you so you could kidnap her and force me to comply, I will repeat that I am neither gullible nor naive, plus is it so hard to hear that I am married? I can see that for you since you are a spiteful bitch who hates the concept of love since your old lover died years ago and you just hate to see people happy and in love in general, outside of this village of hateful bigots, there are plenty of women who see me as a hero to them for various reasons, so marriage is not really a problem even when I told them of the demon sealed within me, my wife loves me and I her. What will it take for you to come back and aid us in this war, growled Tsunade who had grown tired of these games as well as the insults Naruto was throwing her way and just wanted it over with so they could plan on saving the village while her and Jiraiya planned on detaining Naruto once it was over. I could easily tell you what I want from you all, said Naruto with a grin on his face, but that would be too easy in my mind, I want to hear the offers that you have to give me, I want to hear the very people here who made my life a living hell beg for my help, to see how much they are truly willing to offer to save themselves from the war that they started themselves by banishing me and severing all ties with alliances and trading agreements with people I helped. Fine, said Tsunade with a frown since she didn't want to say the words that were about to be said. She felt like she would choke on them, but she had orders from the fire daimyo himself and his word was law in this portion of the world. In return for your service, you are to be immediately inaugurated into the position of Hokage on the orders of the fire daimyo himself but with the stipulation that you assist the village repair the alliances and trading agreements we have lost, when she said that, there was a very awkward silence since no one expected her to say that, they had expected the brad to come back with the first offer alone since they thought he was desperate for a home after so many years away. You are offering me the position of Hokage, said Naruto with a blank look on his face, Tsunade internally smirked since she thought that she had baited the brad into aiding them with this offer. Yes, said Tsunade as she rolled the scroll that the fire daimyo had written to be given to Naruto for him to sign if he accepted, and there is your proof, so will you aid us? Naruto looked over the scroll and read what was written, it was legitimate since he saw the seal that made it so along with the daimyo's signature, all he had to do was sign it and he would become Hokage as was written on the scroll. Naruto began to laugh as he put the scroll down after reading what was on it. And what is so funny, asked Tsunade who was confused at his reaction to their offer. It's just that I have always wanted this position ever since I was a child since it meant that I had the respect of all in the village, and now that it is being offered to me there is only one thing I could say. And that would be, said Tsunade who was expecting a simple yes or a nod from him. No, said Naruto as he blew out a small stream of fire to burn the scroll into ash. What? shouted the room in unison since they had expected him to take the bait when offered what he wanted for so long. I don't want to be the leader of a doomed village anyway, you are all really pathetic with this offer. You think I didn't hear things by snooping around when I was younger? 
You all thought that I was so weak back then when I was on Team 7 and wondered why I was even allowed to become a shinobi in the first place instead of being made into an emotionless weapon like Danzo over there has been wanting for years. You all thought I'd never spy on the Junin, Chunin, and civilians throughout Konoha since why would I? I heard all your talks about me over the years, how you all laughed at my dream of being Hokage, how you all were never going to accept me as your Hokage, how you gained my trust via your children if I ever did and when I least expected it, you would use them to kill me before celebrating my demise in a village celebration, but not before extracting my seed to make a child to begin the process anew, but this time you would go with Danzo's idea. Said Naruto, as he saw Tsunade's eyes widen at the realization the truth about what the village planned for him was heard by the one person they didn't want to hear it. But, but, said Tsunade who was out of ideas to offer Naruto at this point since there was nothing else to offer better than that. And since there is obviously no other offer on the table to try and persuade me to return to this place that has become the bane of my very existence, said Naruto as he stood up and prepared to dispel, then I will take my leave, I would say it has been nice catching up with you all but I am a bad liar and you would see through it in an instant. Wait, said Tsunade, I want to make a bet with you, said Tsunade seeing Naruto was now intrigued by the idea of making a bet with her. A bet, with me, are you sure you want to considering how bad you are at gambling? said naruto while putting his hand under his chin in thought yes a bet you and me fight in the arena said tsunade as she saw naruto was very much interested no said naruto as he shook his head and why not don't think you can take on one of the legendary sanin in a fight i know that i can said naruto it's just the fact that our fight would be over too quickly so here is my proposal to your little wager as it stands your village is basically doomed as it is with me being the only chance you have at survival i will fight you but not just you I want to fight everybody who thinks they can challenge me, remember that I single-handedly defeated so many Iwa shinobi along with their cage so keep that in mind, but what is the wager behind this fight? If we win, you must rejoin our ranks as a shinobi of Konoha once more, said Tsunade with a smug look in her face since she was sure that they could beat Naruto with the proper planning. Agreed, said Naruto, but when I win I just want you to know that I will rip your head off your body and mount it on my wall. What? asked Tsunade in shock that he would say that. You are a bitch plain and simple so I think it a fitting end for you to not only die horrifically but to have your very body desecrated with your head on my wall so that I may laugh at it whenever I see it and know that you were foolish enough to piss me off. Said Naruto as he remembered his mother's last words which were to hang Tsunade's head on his wall for her, he was a man of his word if nothing else, and one more thing, make sure Sasuke fights as well, I unlocked his eyes so that he could fight me at full strength, not to be a pussy and hide in the shadows to strike from behind. Then the bed is settled said tsunade hopefully you guessed that this is all sarcasm and that omega realism can go suck it there are only three people on this website whose word i values above all else and if i lost all three because of terrible writing then i would quit and unfortunately omega realism you are not even close to being one of them i would send this as a pm but he doesn't accept them apparently i wonder why the past week had been a good one for naruto of that there was not even a shred of doubt he had returned home to his loving wife tsunami who greeted him at the door with a kiss as well as a tackle since she was in such a horny mood and wanted him then and there. Naruto was just glad that Inari lived at his grandfather's house or he would have been mentally scarred by all this happening constantly. But after several hours of sex, including several more when he took Tamari as well as Tsunami to spring country, Naruto took off again to meditate and exercise for the upcoming fight. It was like this for the entire week with him visiting one of the three women in his life and then exercising afterwards since a body like his had to be maintained if he wanted to keep the muscles he had, what made it even better was he took all three at the same time on the day before he went back to Konoha, and by the time he was done with them they weren't able to move as he left for the airship that would take him to his destination. But a week had come and gone, and as Naruto indulged in the pleasures of the flesh in spring, in fire country Konoha buckled down and planned on how to beat him. They made up so many plans to force him into submission which even though they wanted him dead they knew that they could just do that later when the war was over with and the security of their village was once again assured. They called back all the high-ranked Jonin and Anbu they had scouting in the country to fight while replacing them with lower-ranked individuals. Extensive complex seals were placed in the arena which was where they were going to fight. Ones that would easily incapacitate the brat quickly so as to defeat him without casualties of any sort on their end since they needed all the shinobi they could get to fight off the combined forces of Iwa and Kumo soon. They had to use some of Tsunade's blood to form the specific seals they needed to make this fight go in their favor since she was an Uzumaki on her grandmother's side, while the seals that were set up were meant to only affect Naruto when activated, Tsunade was also an Uzumaki so she would be as well but in the end she was okay with this because of the fact that it would since it would make it all the worthwhile when the brat was forced into submission. 
Even the fire daimyo himself came to see the spectacle which would be Naruto's submission. And he looked forward to seeing the brat groveling at his feet in a weakened state. He had allowed the citizens of his shinobi village to abuse him in the hopes that at some point in the future he could appear to him when he was far more humbled and submissive so that he could get the boy to sign away his family's fortune to him, but the brat had taken everything with him when he was banished and his shinobi could not find him no matter how hard they looked for him, and once the brat was beaten into submission he would get his hands on his money one way or another. And now a week had passed, and Naruto was within viewing range of the village. He walked towards the gate cool and collected since things were going as planned so far. He was even whistling a tune as he walked towards the front gate, as he walked to the guards he stopped as he saw them glare at him, he stood there and laughed since he recognized one of them as the one he had knocked out when he had come back the first time, the guards let him pass since he was expected, and Naruto took about 10 steps into the village before he was surrounded on all sides by shinobi. Man, said Naruto as he held his head and laughed, to think that all it took for me to receive this type of treatment was to leave for several years, if I had known that when I was younger, I would have left sooner than when I was banished by you people in my teen years. So you came like you said, said Tsunade as she and Jiraiya made their way to the front of the crowd. Yeah, said Naruto with a smirk and a shrug of his shoulders, because unlike some elderly assholes I know, I actually keep my word. And what exactly do you mean by that brat, growled Jiraiya who was pissed at the insult. It's not really that important, but what is important is that we have a bet to settle and I would like to settle it sooner than later so I can return home and fuck my wife. Well if you are that impatient to lose, started Tsunade with a haughty look on her face, then let us head to the stadium to start this. No, said Naruto simply as he remained in place with his hands in his pocket, as he said that it caused everyone to stop mid-step since they didn't expect him to say that out of the blue or at all for that matter. Excuse me said Tsunade with a bit of anger lingering in her voice since she was not someone who liked to be challenged and least of all by the brat that she would love to beat in the face of if and when she was given the chance to do so. Wow, said Naruto with a grin as he looked her directly in the eye, it seems like you are older than people think if you have a hearing problem, because I said no you old hag. You agreed to fight us in a bet, and now you are welching on the bet? No I am not, I agreed to fight you to determine my future, but in our discussion of terms there was no mention as to where we would fight, so I wish to fight in the place of my own choosing. Yet the stadium is the logical choice, said Jiraiya who was not about to let all his hard work in making the seals he placed within it go to waste by the brat simply not going there, plus there is seating for many who have paid good money for tickets to see the event. Oh I am sure it's the ideal place to fight, since I fought in it once already and it would work, I also know that you are correct about the seats and the people since they would love to see what they assume will be my downfall but you are just going to have to refund their money since I am not stupid enough to take so much as one step within a stadium that has been set with seals to weaken me before I even started fighting. How did you know? asked Jiraiya as not only him but everyone else looked at Naruto in shock that he knew about it. To be honest, said Naruto with a smile, it was an educated guess, but with you just admitting it like that, well then it seems like you underestimated my intelligence like you all have for years. And how do you figure that? Man, where do I even begin with that? Let's start at the beginning then, I always knew that my friends were not that, and so when they turned on me the day I was banished it didn't affect me in the slightest since I knew the day would come when it did. Then there was me knowing about my parents since I was 6 fucking years old. I took one look at a picture of Minato and then looked in a mirror, it was that simple, and yet no one else has made this connection. I took what was mine by inheritance out of the village the first time I left it on a mission to keep it safe and yet none of you knew this, to think that I outwitted even the Nara clan which you all claim are the smartest people here. If you are so smart, said Kaharu as she had just about enough of this brat. She had wanted him to be a mindless weapon since the day he was born along with Homura and Danzo. But Hiruzen had been against it, and now their plans to make him submit quickly were out the door since the brat knew their plans to use seals to contain him. So if he wouldn't willingly go to the arena then they would subdue him here and be done with it, hell, they were never going to honor the deal even if he won since Danzo had multiple root shinobi in the shadows waiting on the off chance the brat won who would be exhausted from the fight and easily subdued afterwards, then why would you willingly walk into our trap like this? You think I didn't cover all my bases, said Naruto as he looked at her old wrinkled face, the look in his eyes told her that she was beneath him and she hated that look in his eyes and made plans to make him suffer for even looking at her like that, then you need to retire your old senile ass since I did, do you see that floating object up there? With that Naruto pointed upwards, to which when the people looked where he was pointing there was a small airship which bore the symbol for spring country on it. That, you worthless sack of flesh, is an airship, on it are several people under the orders of Koyuki herself to monitor this fight we are about to have. If I lose then they will leave since the agreement was that I would help you. And while I may hate you all with every fiber of my being I am still a man of my word. If I win then I will leave, 
with any and all attempts to stop me being reported to spring. Who at this very moment are waiting for an order to deliver the tech such as airships and chakra armor to your enemies in this war if the order is given, so if any of you have the plan to, oh I don't know, try and force me into submission when this is all over, well, throughout my life you all tried to break me and failed when I was simply a child, I am now a grown ass man who is stronger than you would have ever let me become so you do the mental math there. So if you don't want to fight in the arena, said Danzo who was absolutely livid that the brat had thought this far ahead to counter all they could and probably still would do if push came to shove in the end, then where exactly do you want to fight? Simple, said Naruto as he pointed towards the Hokage monument, there, there is a fairly large training area near there and the view is good so it would be perfect for this epic fight we will soon have, to be honest it was the only place in my entire time here that I was ever able to feel at peace, which was a miracle in itself seeing that I was abused so damn much. Very well then, said Tsunade who was pissed as was everyone else that their plans had been foiled by the demon and would actually put in the effort to put him down. She signaled for one of her shinobi to relay this information to the people who had gathered in the stadium early since they wanted to get good seats to see Naruto get his ass handed to him. But they were now all pissed that they had wasted their time as well as money since the demon had changed the location of the fight. There was chaos as the people rushed out of the stadium in an attempt to get a spot near the new battleground watch the fight. The fire daimyo was furious as he heard about this since he had been assured that the brat would be brought to heal easily without loss of his forces since they needed all they could spare if they had any chance at surviving the war they were in. It took about 30 minutes, but the area was soon packed with as many people were able to visibly see the fight, the shinobi who were not participating in it head out towards the village, since in their minds they had already won this fight and there was no need to see it to know this, the fire daimyo had the best spot, with Danzo and his lackeys next to him. So the fire daimyo himself saw fit to get his fat lazy ass of his golden throne to witness this match personally, said Naruto with a sneer on his face, I don't know whether to be honored or disgusted by this. You watch your mouth boy, said the fire daimyo in anger, he would not be talked down to by a commoner such as Naruto, you are addressing royalty. And that means what exactly? asked Naruto with a raised eyebrow, you are the leader of a country that has pissed off most of the others into a war that you cannot possibly win. Once this village is destroyed then the invading forces will continue on and kill your pathetically weak ass no problem, I am the only chance that this village has to survive what is to come and yet you try to throw out the royalty card to force me to respect you in some manner, well guess what asshole? I am married to Koyuki, the spring daimyo herself and since that is the case we are on equal footing of the hierarchy scale you and me, but the key difference between us is that my country is not in danger of being overrun by opposing forces like yours is. You married Koyuki, asked Tsunade in shock to hear that Naruto married someone so influential. That I did, said Naruto, who mentally smirked since that was not true, yet at least, he planned to in the future but now was not the time to tie the knot, but these idiots didn't know that nor would they, since unlike you I can actually find someone. Oh you will pay for that you brat, said Tsunade who was absolutely livid to hear him say that. Well I would like to see your old ass try, said Naruto as he got into position to begin the fight, there were 500 shinobi ranging from the strongest of chunin to anbu rank, in the back were all the senseis along with the clan heads and their heirs who were holding back to plan accordingly if naruto somehow managed to defeat so many people to even get to them in the first place, naruto smirked as he cracked his knuckles. you will show me respect by the end of this, said the fire daimyo with a regal voice with all the authority he could muster. oh, i am sorry, said naruto sarcastically as he rolled his eyes at the man, but I find it impossible to respect a man who allowed so many people to abuse an innocent child in one of the most fucked up plans to steal the money left to them by their family. How do you know about that? asked the fire daimyo in shock that the one person he didn't want to know about that plan knew about it. Because when I was 8 years old I saw you meet with Hiruzen, said Naruto with a cocky smirk. So what if you did? asked the fire daimyo who was not really seeing the full picture here, I met with the man on multiple occasions. This is true but after I began to see through all the bullshit that this village tried to shove down my throat to hinder me as well as knowing that Hiruzen was not the kind old man he pretended to be I started looking into things. And that meeting you had with him revealed all the info I needed, I hid in the air duct, as I had before on multiple occasions and I heard you speak about your plans to take what was mine my right of inheritance, and it was because of that that I made, as well as succeeded, my plans to take my money out of the bank so you couldn't get you greedy hands on it no matter what. But how did you even get it Brad? asked Tsunade who was irate to hear all of this, the bank had explicit orders to kick you out and to not serve you in any form. This is true, said Naruto, but I simply used a skill that my mother knew and used it perfectly. And what skill is that? Shadow clones, while I distracted the staff, my clone snuck in through the side and opened the vault to my money, since the seal was made by my parents and I am of their blood, I was easily able to open it so the alarm would not sound off. 
but you learned that when you were 13 and stole the forbidden scroll. If you really believe that then you are dumber than I thought. Laughed Naruto as he heard this, it had always amazed him to see that no one ever put the pieces together and realized he had played them. That technique was forbidden for the reason of it being fairly advanced and using it improperly would mean the death of the user if done incorrectly. Now think about this for a minute, my teachers have sabotaged my education for as long as I can remember, and like the actor I was I played along and showed you all the dead last you wanted me to be so as to control me, now if I was truly that bad as you wanted, how in hell would I be able to master a jutsu that could literally kill you within minutes of looking at it? So you knew how to use that jutsu all along, growled Jiraiya, who hated to hear that the plans he and his sensei had made to make the brat into a loyal weapon had failed far earlier than they had expected, how? The Kiyubi of course, said Naruto with a shrug of his shoulders, he was the only true friend I had who shared the truth of my family to me, he knew what my mother knew and showed me how to train in her techniques. And you listened to the demon, it wasn't a hard choice, the Kiyubi offered knowledge and truth, while the village offered me nothing at all but pain and tried to take everything, including my loyalty from me. But wait, said the fire daimyo as something had been bugging him for a bit, most of the money for your family was in the bank in the fire capital, how the hell did you get it when you never were sent on a mission there? And you no doubt made sure that I never would go there. Said Naruto, but once I entered my rightful home, I found paperwork showing where my money was and took action. Seeing as the bank in the capital has far more security than the one here I had to plan accordingly. First I took the money I extracted here to pay the minimum amount to gain a vault since they are fairly pricey. I hanged a shadow clone into a fake persona along with false credentials I had. When I made the account I put the money in the vault no problem. Then I just waited a week to return in disguise to extract both vaults of their money. The vaults are not monitored since the seals on them would sound an alarm if tampered in any way, so once again my blood did the trick. You stole money that wasn't yours to have, growled Tsunade. Actually I didn't since it was mine by right, said Naruto as he looked at her. But I knew you wanted it for yourself, at first I thought it was because you were a greedy hag. But in my time away I heard so man rumors, you were flat broke. Since you have gambled the entire fortune of the Senju away like an idiot. To make matters worse you still owe money to so many debt collectors, and it is because of that that you want this money, and then I hear how you have been getting constant extensions on payments by using Shizune to whore herself out to them, since you are so fucking high and mighty to not do it yourself. You dishonor both sides of the family with you greedy nature, and while I pity her for what you put her through, it will not stay my hand in the slightest when I kill her. You will pay for this brat, said Tsunade who at this point was seething that her dirty little secret of whoring out Shizune was known to all, those collectors had wanted her to sleep with them for an extension but she was Tsunade Senju, not a whore. So she offered up Shizun, who was against it, but a special concoction Tsunade made to inhibit her sexual urges fixed that right quick. I highly doubt that I will, but all in all I am glad to see you took my advice that I gave you the last time I was here seriously and gathered so many people to fight me, said Naruto, this will make it far easier to beat Minato's record for shinobi killed by one man in the third shinobi war. This match is to the knockout, said the fire daimyo, not to the death. And yet without my help your village is doomed to die anyway, so I say it is to the death since without me they are dead anyway, and I hope they come at me with the intent to kill me as well, since they have done so since I was but a child, so why change their ways now? Now I want you all to pay close attention to this, said Naruto as he used his thumbs to jab specific pressure points in his legs, as he did he felt the power surge through them at a tremendous rate and he would unleash it all at once in a moment, he was in front of them for a brief millisecond before his afterimage faded, he then appeared behind the main group of shinobi, who then all convulsed and exploded from his supersonic hokuto strikes, because you were all already dead. Those who saw this stepped back quite a bit to see the demon brat kill so many men in less than 5 seconds, it just wasn't possible in their minds even though they just saw it with their own eyes. And just like that his record is decimated, said Naruto with a grin, but the kicker to that move is that I can only use it once within a 24 hour period or I risk losing my legs, so the rest of you I have to take my time to kill. The initial shock of the massive death scene that played out before them finally subsided. And when it did they came at Naruto hard, the first person to strike out against him was surprisingly Hinata herself. Naruto remembered the slap he was given by her and smiled as he easily dodged the attacks she threw at him in an attempt to shut his chakra system down. It wasn't just her though since he also had to dodge Neji as well as Hiyashi as well, which made it trickier but still doable, Naruto then performed a sweep kick that only Hinata was able to dodge in time and as she landed back on her feet after jumping over it Naruto jabbed his finger under her chin, this caused her body to go stiff, and then he slapped her hard across the face to the point her head faced one direction, then he slapped her once more so her head now faced the other. Phantom channeling point this is for slapping me years ago, said Naruto coldly. 
Why? said Hinata as her head began to expand painfully. Why can't I move? Her head then exploded and her body fell over dead. As Naruto stood there and prepared for the next person to attack him, he felt a sharp pain in his arm. When he looked down to see why that was, his eyes widened to see his entire arm was missing as the Kamui dissipated. Naruto held his stump for an arm and screamed out in pain as he used his hand to stem off the flow of blood escaping from his wound. Well it looks like we win, said Tsunade as she as well as the others surrounding him began to laugh at his pain. They had always found it humorous to see him suffer and this was no different to them. You think this is funny, growled out Naruto, when he said it the laughter only got louder, you all think this is fucking funny. Naruto glared as he saw so many people close to tears from laughing so hard, but then his glare turned into a smile as he chuckled for a bit. It is not as funny as the look on all of your faces. When he said that, everyone around him stopped laughing since they wondered what the hell he was going on about, but in the end their looks of confusion turned to ones of shock as they saw Naruto poke a few places near the flesh wound and out of the stump the rest of his arm returned back to what it was before it had been taken by Kakashi's move. How did you, started Tsunade, who at this point was completely speechless as she saw Naruto rapidly regrow a lost limb like that. A combination of my Uzumaki regenerative genetics supercharged by the single fact that I am a Jinchuriki, and also my fighting style helped to hasten my recovery quite nicely, so in the end while Kakashi's plan was a solid one, it was useless to try, but if it is any sort of consolation that hurt like hell. Naruto then moved fast then they expected him to and appeared before Kakashi himself. The man was on one knee since using the Kamui took so much out of him to use and he was taking a breather, but it seemed like he was not going to get that much needed breather though since Naruto was here to finish him off personally. Naruto raised his hand in an open palm and slammed it down hard onto Kakashi's head with a chop. Stone Mountain splitting slash Kakashi felt massive amounts of pain as he felt his brain split in two. And as it did his body fell over since he was basically brain dead at this point, Naruto ducked from a punch that was sent his way by Tsunade from behind. He grabbed her by the arm and pulled her into position before he slammed his fist into her gut. Her eyes opened wide in pain as she felt her body go numb and she was sent flying backwards. The blow Naruto had hit her with was a fairly powerful paralyzing blow meant to keep her out of the fight until he was ready to deal with her properly. At this point both Neji as well as Hiyashi appeared next to him and tried to attack him in sync with their clan's signature fighting style. But Naruto simply ducked under their strikes and got into a better position, while to others looking at their strikes it seemed normal but to Naruto their strikes moved in slow motion so it was easy to dodge them, when Hiyashi attempted to strike him once more, Naruto simply moved his head to the side and used his fingers to poke several pressure points on his arms. Hokuto bone demolisher Hiyashi screamed in pain as his arm bulged at first. But then out of nowhere the top of his head exploded. Neji attempted to strike him so as to avenge Hiyashi in some way. But Naruto knocked him off his feet with a quick sweep kick and threw him into the air, once he fell. Naruto proceeded to pummel his back in multiple points, shattering Neji's spine as he did, for a brief moment of time, Neji fully understood the pain that Lee had gone through when his spine had been damaged after fighting Gara, and with one more yell of power, Naruto landed the final blow that caused Neji to explode in midair. Hokuto Wingbreaker It was at this point that Naruto felt his body stiffen unexpectedly, when he looked to see why he noticed his shadow had been caught in both Shikamaru as well as his father's shadow possession. His enemies capitalized on his immobility since Lee and Guy activated multiple gates and rushed him. Naruto felt every blow they hit him with, and after a minute of non-stop pummeling from the dynamic duo they finally stopped and saw Naruto cough out blood from his injuries. I am glad to see you take this seriously, said Naruto with a smirk as the power within him began to grow, it means that this fight will not get boring. Naruto's body then expanded quite a bit as his muscles bulged out and he began to glow with a blue aura of power. His jacket exploded as his power grew and before Guy or Lee could react to this sudden event Naruto was upon them and striking the both of them with blows all over that caused their bodies to explode as the end result. With his body powered up, Naruto made short work of all the others who dared to challenge him, they all died violent explosive deaths as he used an array of techniques that had been taught to him from his sensei, in the end all that was left was Jiraiya as well as Sasuke, both who had gone into their sage mode to fight him, he had saved them for last. Rasengan exclaimed Jiraiya while the orb of energy he charged forward with connected with its intended target, who honestly let the attack hit him, and felt its power explode around him, as for Jiraiya, he smirked at the sight of his attack exploding, and no doubt killing the son of his first former student, sure they were meant to subdue the brat, but he had done so much damage at this point and they would need to eliminate him to make sure he could no longer hinder them. Is that it Jiraiya? One measly half-assed jutsu and you think the battle is over? That you have won? questioned Naruto while he chuckled as the dust around him cleared up so that Jiraiya could see that his attack had done nothing more than leave what appeared to be a slight sunburn on Naruto's chest where he had hit him. 
That hit you dead on, you should be dead, exclaimed Jiraiya while Naruto chuckled more. I should have died from a lot of things in my life, but I am a stubborn man, especially when the one who attacked me is some weak little perverted fool like you, countered Naruto coldly while slowly walking toward a shocked, worried, and angry Jiraiya. You Uzumaki filth never knew when it was in your best interest to lay down and die, exclaimed Jiraiya before he unleashed the swamp of the underworld on Naruto to trap him on the spot. The same can be said about you Jiraiya, remarked Naruto before he pulsed his power to obliterate the swamp and slowly walked out of the crater made in the process. Why won't you just die already? asked Jiraiya angrily while throwing one jutsu after another at Naruto as he moved away from him so as to keep his distance, but did not hurt the former Jinchuriki one bit. Because I can't die at the hands of a foolish old man like you. Especially one, who has no shame, and tries to influence a prophecy he should NT have tried to meddle with in the first place. Said Naruto before he batted the water jutsu used by Jiraiya upwards, you tried to use me to further your own goals with the prophesy that the elder toad told you, and then you tried to kill me when it became apparent that I couldn't be controlled so as to avoid the prophesy altogether, because in your mind if I wasn't going to aid Konoha then you were gonna make sure that I was not a threat. I did what I did to make the prophecy benefit Konoha in the end, always Konoha since it is my home, if I have to manipulate a prophecy in a way so half the world is butchered and Konoha is standing over the endless pile of corpses, I will do it. Nothing but this village matters to me, if I gain the fame and recognition for my actions as an end result, I'll take it. But you didn't understand that, you never did, you chose to defy your purpose in life. Your purpose was to fight for Konoha, to die for Konoha, all the long years you wanted to live your life freely, it was spitting in the face of the village, you were fighting against everything you were and still are Naruto, you were a pawn, a tool, a weapon of war made to kill Konoha's enemies and those who challenges our strength, you may or may not have died like we wanted you to years ago but your overall purpose in life has not changed, not once. The only thing that has changed, is you have the foolish and unfortunate belief that you should be fighting against the very village that raised you, I will not stand for it, exclaimed Jiraiya while Naruto cruelly chuckled at his words. And that Jiraiya, is why you are forever, an idiot, commented Naruto coldly since all he saw before him was a fool while Jiraiya seethed at the insult, since I would never fight for a place that sees me as nothing more than a slave to their whims, I am an Uzumaki and we live free. At least I am not dead like you, exclaimed Jiraiya before he charged forward in the hopes of catching Naruto off guard and shoving a Rasengan down his throat, his mind was not thinking rationally at this point since he clearly did not remember that it didn't work the first time. Only to underestimate Naruto's speed entirely, Naruto simply used both his thumbs and slammed them onto the sides of Jiraiya's head, causing his body to go limp, thus cancelling his Rasengan. You have three seconds left said Naruto as he walked away towards Sasuke who was prepared to take Naruto on in a vain state of mind that he would defeat him since he was an Uchiha, those three seconds seemed to last forever for Jiraiya as they slowly ticked down, he thought of everything in his life that he did as it flashed before his eyes, as well as his regrets as well, but the single regret he had that shadowed over all others. Not paying more attention to Naruto and falling for his ruse as being a simple minded child. And with that thought his head exploded, so you managed to kill the rest of those weaklings and save the best for last, said Sasuke as Naruto stood there with his arms crossed in front of his chest. And how do you consider them weaklings when you yourself are no better than them? Because I am an Uchiha, we are and will always be superior to all others, as he said that, Naruto could have sworn he heard Sakura screaming in agreement to his vain statement, but that didn't make sense since Naruto had killed her with a slash of Nanto through her throat since her voice was and had always been so goddamn annoying so he took it upon himself to silence her forever in the most ironic way. And yet you were the last one, said Naruto, and with your death they will be extinct. Sasuke heard him say this and grew pissed off beyond measure that he had the gall to say that to him to his face. Sasuke activated his Mangekyo Sharingan and used it to summon forth his Suzano, it encased his body in energy and lifted him up as if he were floating in the air. With this power I am invincible, so you would think, said Naruto as he took a deep breath and got into the proper position to unleash the power he would need to use to defeat Sasuke, but in reality it just makes you a far bigger target to hit. After I kill you, said Sasuke in a furious voice, I am going to go and find your wife and make her into my little plaything, I will force her to bear my children against her will until her mind shatters and she screams out my name as you become forgotten, I will find your son and make him suffer untold pain until he begs for mercy and when he does I will only increase the pain until he curses your name for being born your son. Are you quite done, said Naruto calmly, even though Sasuke said all those things, he was all talk and no real skill so there was really no threat here, because I am bored, you're boring me. Sasuke then used his Suzano's massive fist to try and strike Naruto down. 
But Naruto simply moved his arms a bit, and when he did seven orbs of light appeared before him. He placed his hands together as if he was charging an attack with his hands. And threw them towards the massive purple fist that was hulking towards him. The energy behind Naruto's attack not only stopped the Suzano mere inches from hitting him, but it also caused the arm to shatter like it was glass as well, but it didn't stop there since the rest of the Suzano broke as well as Sasuke cried out in pain as he felt his body burn from whatever Naruto had done to his Suzano, but his screams only intensified as his eyes exploded out of his sockets as well. Execution of Celestial Destruction Sasuke was on the ground on one knee as he coughed out blood, his eyes were now bloody sockets that were devoid of anything other than the blood that flowed from them. Look at the so-called elite Uchiha now, said Naruto as he cracked his knuckles as he walked towards Sasuke. Sasuke painfully got to his feet and got into a half-assed fighting stance. Not really looking intimidating in the slightest from his wounds as the blood dripped from his now vacant eye sockets, even with your eyes fully unlocked like they were you still lost to me with but one move alone, the so-called Dobi, the loser who you ridiculed for most of your life as you claimed time and time again that you were better than me. How does it feel to gain all that power you so desperately wanted to find out that it was still not enough to beat me in the end? Go to hell, said Sasuke with all the hatred his weakened body was able to muster, he threw a punch out towards Naruto's direction since he heard where he was coming from. Naruto easily grabbed his hand and used it to turn Sasuke around as he broke his arm and held it behind his back. You first, whispered Naruto into Sasuke's ear, but before you depart let me tell you one simple thing. Itachi is still alive and well. He felt Sasuke stiffen as he heard this, but before Sasuke could say anything else, Naruto punched him all over his body, this caused Sasuke to spasm uncontrollably as his body expanded, he screamed in pain as his body finally exploded, sending his blood and organs all over the place, as he saw Sasuke die, he remembered the last conversation that he had with Itachi. Flashback, Itachi opened his eyes after a full minute, surprised to see that he was still alive when he had expected to die by Naruto's hands. I am still alive. He asked in shock since he had made peace with the fact he was going to die and now he wasn't. Of course you are, said Naruto as he held a vial that was full of Itachi's blood that he had taken from his cheek, he had struck him in a way that made his body go numb so that he didn't flinch so he could take just enough blood from him to do what he needed to do. I thought you were going to kill me, why the hell would I kill the one person in all of Konoha who cared for my safety? asked Naruto with a raised eyebrow. I thought you needed to kill me to send a message to my brother said Itachi as the illusionary world they had been in shattered and they were in the real world once more. I do, said Naruto as he pulled out two scrolls from the inside of his jacket, he unrolled one of them and placed the vial of blood upon it before he made a hand sign, when he made it, the vial of blood shattered and the blood within it transformed into the head of Itachi with his eyes half open with a pained look on his face, but I just needed enough blood to clone your head. But the head won't last for very long, I am familiar with these kinds of things to know they don't. While that is true, said Naruto as he unrolled the second scroll, which contained a box with seals carved into it, he placed the head within it and closed the lid up before he resealed it into the scroll, this secondary scroll will basically halt the timer the head has so that it won't decay until it is unsealed, but all of that is irrelevant since there are explosive seals that will destroy it before they ever take it to be tested in any way, I am really going for the shock factor here more than anything else. So what now? asked Itachi as he stretched a bit to get the soreness out of the muscles in his body since it had gotten stiff while he was in the illusionary world. Well that should be obvious, said Naruto as he pat Itachi on the shoulder with a grin on his face. While I am flattered, said Itachi with a smile of his own, I am sorry to say that I don't swing that way. Wait, said Naruto with a look of confusion on his face since his response had come out of left field and he was not expecting that, what the hell do you mean by that? Hey, said Itachi as he held up his hand in mock defense, it's okay if you are gay, I am just not interested. Why the hell do you think I am gay, said Naruto with a raised eyebrow. Just a hunch is all, you do know I am married right? Yeah, said Itachi with a smirk, and what is the name of the lucky man? Her name is Tsunami you smartass, she is a woman. You do know what a beard is right? You fully understand I can still kill you right? Yes I am fully aware of that fact, said Itachi with a bit of a chuckle, it felt good to express himself for once in his life. He had learned to suppress his emotions to become a far more efficient shinobi, but with Naruto it was more of a meeting of family members so there was no need for such a thing since they were not trying to kill one another. But all kidding aside, said Naruto as he held out a key that had been left to him by his master so that he could return one day and replace the scrolls he took from the vault in the first place, take this key and head to Whirlpool. Why should I head there of all places? because to the rest of the world you will be declared dead, and with this key you can gain access to the Uzumaki vault with all the knowledge that is inside of it. And you are just going to trust me with such knowledge? 
My mother would have trained you herself, so I believe this is long overdue really, plus there is the simple fact that while I wish I could, there are jutsus I can't use since I do not have the affinity to do anything more than a basic jutsu in that element, you on the other hand should be able to use them so that the knowledge does not go to waste. Well I thank you, said Itachi with a genuine smile as he took the key from Naruto's hand, and I wish you luck on your journey. Itachi then burst into a flock of crows and disappeared from the cave. Naruto smiled as he set out to accomplish what he needed to do next thanks for watching.